Y'all know the vibes. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. You're playing partner Lush Uno. Your girl, Gina Views. And I'm very excited for this one right here. Arguably, no, no, no. Definitively. Uh Uh-oh. The greatest female battle rapper of all time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. What? I didn't expect this. <laughs> and I'm sorry to all the homegirls that I pissed off. I love each and every one of y'all. But, but you, you ain't Jazz the rapper. Oh, big bag the jazz. Mm-hmm. The big bag, not the little one. Not tell the whatever. One. Tell whoever mad I lost my virginity, go and find it. <laughs> okay. Um, I had to bring you a gift. Oh uh, man. A series of gifts because it's it's only right. I love gifts. When uh jazz is in the building. We know what you like. <laughs> we know what you like. Had to bring you the thought juice. Oh my God. You got your your choice of flavors. <laughs> Y'all gonna make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> what thought you? The quickest way to a jazz's heart is the thought juice. What's your favorite flavor? Mango. I'm not sure if we might have a okay. man. <laughs> I like them all. We got you um, three white claws and a and a lime you know, I'm not. I'm new to white claw. I'll try it. I've seen, but you got mango though. There we go. So, there, there we go. go. I love mango. We gonna see. Wait, when did they make them that big? That looked like a two eleven. Oh yeah. They trying to. They compete? being that big. They, no, they 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 up in the score. Uh, <laughs> they're trying to compete, but no, you see how you're not Jazz the rapper. You're not. <laughs> you're not a reader. I'm gonna tell you why. Eight percent alcohol. Mm. White claws five. Mm. It's a difference. Give the home never... girl a sponsorship. Quit Listen, playing. I already got my flavor name, Jazz Burrito. Mm. Period. What right would it taste person? like? That I gotta. I can't tell you. I can't give you the juice. You're right. You're right. You're right. (laughs) I can't give you the juice. Nah, you know, I would do a little testing and stuff like that. But yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Like, this really makes me happy. Like, that's just really. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like Lush deserves the right to be in the next bar. Whatever. Hey. Round round three, preferably. Hey. All right, hold on. I'm going to try to think of one. You you know what's crazy is. I got some battles locked in. I'm going to try to. (laughs) Throwing in there. That is so much love because there is a time where I was actually in Jazz's crosshairs <laughs> and I was going to be the subject of ridicule in some jazz bars. And she avoided avoided talking about you? She she was like, hey, if you say one more thing, you about to get dissed. What was, what was you saying about Jazz the Rapper? I never said anything about her. Like, I just, <laughs> she just liked to pick on me. To in be his honest defense, with you. he never said anything about me. Yeah. I just didn't like him. I was just... <laughs> in black and white. I, I was, didn't like him. I was just trying to be cool. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> and I think that's what it was. It was like, it takes a lot for me to not like somebody. Like, a lot. Like, you have to be really extra with something that you're doing. And you were extra. Oh, I'm, you I extra. mean, I am extra. You, yeah. yeah. Well, for the yeah. people who don't know what the hell y'all talking oh. about, a.k.a. me. Okay. What happened? What's the story so between Jazz nothing, and No, her? it was literally nothing personal. Just his persona of Lush One being at the events and being the host. <laughs> and he was a lot. And it was there too much. It was a lot. And you always around, you be there too much. It was too much. I never even met him. Yeah, that's that the cold part. part. So this is this is actually only my second time. That was a fat bar, brother. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Brooklyn, come on. I love um, it. But no, this is only the second time we've met in person, which is crazy because... It don't feel like it. Yeah, I feel like... And I'm not exactly sure. So what the initial interaction that Jazz and I had, this is probably back in 2011 when she first hopped on the scene. She's like 18 years old, instantly a star, you know, just out the gate, superstar power. And like, I was like tweeting at her, trying to get her to like come battle. And I said, I was just, you know, doing my usual Lush One slick talk. And I was like, you need to holler at a trill player, come out West and rock with me. And then you didn't like that trill. She didn't (laughs) respond. I remember it to this day. I don't remember that. This is so, this is so (laughs) I know you don't. This is so funny though. I love it. I love you for this response. She tweeted, she tweeted, not at me. She said, she's all, not lush one in my mentions talking about he a trill player. Oh. <laughs> Jazz, if, if, you, if you was going to make some bars oh about him God. during that time, what you would have said in the battle about lush? I don't know. I mean, it all depends. It all depends on the mood, what I'm trying to give. I think about things like that. How do I want this bar to make people feel? Laugh? Mm-hmm. Like, damn, she violated. Like, you know, it's, it's all about the vibes. But we good now. I'm not going to have no bad bars about Lush. What I, we good. When did it change? Because I'm... Honestly, 
I don't know when it changed. Maybe you changed. I I, I did change. A little I don't bit. know. Maybe you changed. Maybe I kind of just like came to terms like, all right, this is just him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do anything to me. And then, you know, I like we had conversations, like actual conversations, mm-hmm. like years later. And it was just like, oh, all right. Yeah. Cool. You're cool. I'm glad because I always was just like had like the biggest like lyrical crush on you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I was and just you know, like, I didn't, it's not like I hated you. No, no, no. Or like I, I just, oh, I hate him. It was just, ugh. I think I just hurt your a, nerves. It was, a, it was a, ugh. Like, but, but <laughs> the thing is though, like she always like followed me on Twitter. We always like had right. interactions. It was, not, yeah. I, I think I was just like, you're, you're like pesky, like uncle or something. Yeah. That was like, oh. yeah. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. It's not like I didn't have no respect for you. I still followed you stuff like that, but it was just a, <sighs> was he like a gnat at a barbecue? Just bugging the fuck out of you just two everywhere. Nats. Two nats and a mosquito. And I hate mosquitoes. Not a mosquito. Not a mosquito. I hate mosquitoes. Well, let's let's mosquitoes. go back to the beginning. 2011. Is that when you started? Yep, that's when I started battle rapping. Actually, I was just on the phone with Debo. Shout out to Debo. Shout, 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 shout out to, to Debo. The big homie January Debo. January 2011. So this month makes 12 years wow. that I've been battle rapping. So even... Pre- I want to know, because I want to get into that, but I want to know about... Young Jazz the Rapper. Yes. Like, from Brooklyn. What part yeah. of Brooklyn are you from? I'm from Canarsie. Okay. Yeah, I'm from Canarsie. Which is, you know, that's where, like, Pop Smoke is from. Mm-hmm. and That's the only person we have. Well, the crazy thing. And me. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you know who, like, Necro is. Necro's from Canarsie. He was a rapper from Canarsie, like, way uh, back in the day. Okay. Like, okay. But, like, Canarsie is now getting a lot more recognition, but it was kind of like, it's one of the last subway stops, right? Mm-hmm. So it kind of is like, a, train. it's difficult to get to. Yeah, it's like, always, it was like, oh my God, you live in Canarsie, that's far, da 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 But I get it, because then I moved to East New York when I was like 15, mm-hmm. so I kind of understood, oh, this is why they said it was far, because it was hard to get to. Especially if you live in C by C, if you're the Patagons, oh, it's no buses or trains, nothing. Mm-hmm. You out of there, you can't walk nowhere. Right, and uh, Canarsie, though, is a pretty... Pretty rough section. It has its areas. It has, has its areas. Has its yeah. areas. And mm-hmm. like, so, but you always seem like kind of a good kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you didn't get in a lot of trouble go- growing up. Yeah. I wasn't that. I wasn't, I was, how can I say? I was one of those kids like in school, if I got in trouble, it would be for talking, making jokes, making beats on the table, stuff like that. Like nothing really crazy. Um, Were you the class clown? I wouldn't say I was the class clown. Like, I wasn't the funniest person in the class, but I was one of the people that were funny, if you knew, Mm -hmm. (laughs) type shit. Like, I was the person that I laugh at myself. I remember one time I was in social studies class. I was sitting in the back corner. We all talking. The teacher yelled at us, cool. Everybody shut up. I'm talking to myself laughing. The teacher yelled at somebody else. They was like, yo, that's her. (laughs) She's talking to herself. (laughs) Like, I'm one of those people. I know how to have fun by myself. But, um, yeah, I grew up with both my parents, married. They've been married for maybe, like, 30 years? Still. It's a long time, yeah. I have an older sibling. She's 34. Um, It's just me and her. I don't have any brothers. I wish I did, though. Um, But, yeah, like, they, they... I lived in a really good, I had a really good childhood, great household. It wasn't too much going on, so, yeah. Did you feel, like, pressure to get into the typical activities of the neighborhood and things like that? Because, you know, there's kids out there mm-hmm. doing bad, involved in, mm-hmm. you know, street yeah. life, slaying in, whatever. Like, yeah. did, did you feel that pressure, or were you kind of just far removed from that? I think, I think all of us, we're, we're growing up teenagers, you know? There's just things you think about doing, things that you would never do. And I never went too far with the things that I wanted to do mm-hmm. or the thing. Like, you know, it's just that's just not how I was raised, and I didn't feel like I needed to do anything like that. So I kind of just stayed away from it. And even with friends and family, like that wasn't. If I knew somebody that was doing that, I would keep my distance. Mm-hmm. Like you just wouldn't be that close to me. Mm-hmm. Were so, you raised in a strict household? No, I wasn't raised in a strict household at all. That's that's really interesting. That because I would think you were. Not at all. So obvious. Actually, <laughs> actually, yeah, I would say, like, even if you were to ask all my closest friends, they would say no. They used to, they, my real name is Magenta. So my school friends, they know me as Magenta. Magenta parents let her do anything. Like, not anything, but mm-hmm. they trusted me enough to, like, if I'm, when I was, what, 17 years old, that's when I really started, like, performing, like, outside, like, rapping. So I'll be performing at schools. I'll be performing at bars, clubs. They would have to sneak me in because I'm not 21. 
And my parents trusted me with that. As long as, you know, you, you let us know you're good, I would come home like two or three in the morning. Mm -hmm. But um, they know I'm rapping. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they trusted me. I called them. If, I, if I'm going somewhere, am I going to a friend's house? Call me. I mean, it's been a few times I ain't called. Yeah. But, you know, after a while, I started being like, okay, I understand why. So I didn't have strict parents at all. Where did Jazz come from? Uh, my middle Magenta. name. My middle oh, name is okay. Jasmine. Yeah, so only school people call me Magenta. And my family and friends outside of school call me Jasmine. Have anybody used that in a battle yet, Magenta? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to say, yeah, a lot of them did. Shayna used it. Official used it. Uh, I want to say Geechee might have used it. I think Geechee did use it. Uh, a few people used it. It's 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 tough to use though because it's a color, right? You know, right. oh, Vixen used it. Mm -hmm. Vixen used it. Um, it's a color and it's from Blue's Clues, so you don't really have much that you could do. With I it. watched that. I watched the Vixen battle again this morning, and that definitely went over my head. And that's probably because I didn't know. Yeah, right. Now I gotta yeah. watch it again. Yeah, Magenta is my first name. It was actually supposed to be my middle name, but the doctor put it backwards, and my mom never changed it. <laughs> Remix. So, there's that. Not the doctor had bars. Right. <laughs> When did you when did you realize that you had like this lyrical propensity? Like you Ooh. knew you could rap and all that. Thirteen years old. Okay. What? I wrote my first rap June twenty second, two thousand five. If you remember all that, I know you remember the, the bars. Oh, I remember the first bar. What is it? <clears throat> Go. Hey, hold on, my <laughs> <laughs> It was on Cassidy TikTok beat, right? And like. You know, like, it's kind of, it's weird because my style never really changed. You know how in battles, like, I'm funny? Mm -hmm. The first bar was, I cut ass like a thong with a blade, man. Ooh. <laughs> Why okay. do I say that? <laughs> Your first bar that you ever rapped. Oh, yeah, and by the way, cut ass is New York for, like, roast, if right. you didn't know. Right. Yeah, but yeah, that was my first bar I wrote. But the whole verse was fire, though. I just don't remember it. And well, it's I like wish, your first bar I'm, is a punchline. I'm not going to lie, though. I... So, I have my rap books. That verse might be in there. Because I date my... I used to date my um, verses, too. You have a rap book from back then? Two. Wow. Black and white marble notebooks. And I don't know what it was. Like, I just used to date all my shit. And, like, now that I'm older, I'm happy I did. Because it yeah. gives me exactly when I wrote this, what month I wrote this, how old I was. Any bars from back then that, like, is good to, like, use in a battle today? I haven't... Went through it. I cut but... ass like a thunk now. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't went through it um, in a while, but I'm sure there were ideas that I like. Nah, you was wild. And like even when I was cleaning my um my room, I was going through it, and I had a. It was titled NBA Story, mm -hmm. and it was a story using all the um, NBA teams, which in battle rap world that's a scheme. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it wasn't rhyming, but it was just a story. So it was. I don't know, so let's say, oh, um, we went to a Laker games and I, I said I bought a nail clipper. And like it was like <laughs> along the lines of that. But I was like, some of the balls was kind of crazy. Like I was connecting everything and I was only like 14, 15. So it's like I can see that my brain has always been uh, I guess ahead of itself, really. Yeah. I just got better with it. So who, who influenced you back then? Back then it would be Papoose, Cassidy, Fab. Them three, that's it. So that's it. Punchers out the gate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was punchers. Fab is definitely yep. top two and he ain't two. Yeah. Yeah, no. Like and then later on it was like Jada Kiss. Um Eminem is my favorite rapper though. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, that's my favorite rapper. I did not know this about you. Yeah. A lot of people don't know it, but that is absolutely I get it though with the comedy down. and all of that too though. Hands down, yeah. like how could like he's he's amazing. New M or old M or like or I all don't M? care. All M. I don't care. All of them. All of them. All of them. Die hard. <laughs> no, for real, I love him. But, um, but yeah, like you said, like, you know, he had personality. Mm -hmm. You know, his videos just gave you a story. You know what I mean? Like, some of his songs, even if he's not saying anything that's a bar or a punch, it still puts you through these emotions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, but, yeah, those were my heavy influences. And as you can see, I'm a punchline battle rapper, and that's where it comes from. As far as M... I forget if it was Sada Baby or T Grizzly. It was some rapper from Detroit made a comment about Eminem's music don't get played in the hood. Growing up in Brooklyn, did you hear? Is that a is that an accurate narrative or is that um, false narrative? It might be accurate. 
It might be accurate. You know, he was very when I was when when I when he first came out, I was like ten. So he was all over MTV. He mm-hmm. was one of those. Like he was fake a rap slash pop star. Right. Um, his songs were like on the billboards, but they weren't something you would hear like in in a car, like with people playing. Like I know when my father bought me the Marshall Mathers LP, I I probably was like eleven or twelve, and but he bought me the clean version. Eminem oh. used to be wilding. So you you basically had five words on the he whole album. Wilding, yeah. like he was wilding. Yeah, but um. But yeah, he my you know my mother she was more of a like why are you gotta listening to this stuff, but it's like that's what she wants to hear. Like I remember when I was younger and Money Cash Hoes came out and I was in the car like Money Cash Hoes. Money. Mom. My mother was so mad. <laughs> I didn't know what it was though, but um but yeah uh M does he? It's certain people, but it's certain, I feel like it's certain rappers that you have a certain certain situations. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't want to hear Eminem. In, in the hood mm-hmm. I want right. to other things but if I'm feeling this type of way I now I want to hear Eminem or if I'm, I'm in the hood I might now I might want to hear some pop smoke but I might not want to hear these people when I'm doing certain things right. makes a lot of so as far as I wanted to bring that up because right now is like one of the biggest movements New York's had in a long time mm-hmm. and it's the drill scene started in Brooklyn now it's kind of more prevalent in the Bronx and mm-hmm. Harlem mm-hmm. And, and even Queens is getting in the mix and stuff like what are your thoughts on the drill music um I'm not annoyed with it you know you know how a lot of times there there's just these fads of music mm-hmm. and at, at one point you're just like all right um I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm not tired of drill music. Like, I like it. It's our sound. Like you said, we haven't had dominance in rap in a long time. Yeah. A long time. And, you know, people across the world is fucking with it. So it's just kind of like, all right, cool. We're going we gonna to rock out. So you're high key fake jacking it, basically. I, I like it. That's I right. like it. Yeah. Um, do you, what are your thoughts on, do you feel like that drill music is adding to the crime or is drill music a reflection mm. of the crime in the city? Mm. Mm. I say both. I say both. And I say that because, um, you know, when you make music, that's you're basing it off what you live. But at the same time, like we said, people are so easily persuaded. Peer pressure mm-hmm. is a thing. You know what I mean? Um, and that's just with music and, and, and rappers. You have this image. When you have this image, your fans is is trying to copy it or just the other rappers are trying to outmatch you. So it's it's really both. It's really both. It's mm-hmm. unfortunate though. Like it's very unfortunate. Like when I was younger, I didn't really, you know, think about things like that. But as I got older, you know, you start to appreciate life the older the older you get. So it's like, damn, like these kids is doing all this just because they they think that's what you should do or they know what's wrong. But if I do this, I get cool points. It's like right. it's it's a cycle though, because I feel like it goes through it every damn generation for real. I mean, you literally at this point, there's there's drill diss songs that have about by teenagers talking about other dead teenagers mm-hmm. that are, you know, mocking the way these kids died and now are like TikTok trends. Mm-hmm. And there's white girls yes, in Wisconsin. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. You feel me? That's dancing crazy. and they don't know what the hell they're really getting yeah. down to it's kind of it's kind of it's it's sad it's sad like because that's a sensitive topic you know obviously drill from chicago mm-hmm. chicago they chicago i feel was the catalyst of it all once 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 chicago hot, got hot with it um you know it just started expanding to other places and right like even overseas mm-hmm. i didn't heard french drill yep i didn't heard italian drill they be going crazy though i ain't gonna lie they do but um but yeah like it 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 kind of is like almost like poisonous for real mm-hmm. because it's like we want to hear it the people like it we're gonna keep it going but when you're a teenager you don't really realize how serious like what you're doing or what, what you're saying on these songs so it's it's really a double-edged sword for do real. you think it should be limitations because we can people can even say the same thing about battle rap because sometimes in battle rap niggas might go too far do you think it should be limitations or should it be past just because it's hip-hop um battle rap Hmm. So why do you think that, why would you compare drill to battle rap? Because we t- we're talking about how these kids are talking about dead ops and mimicking them and stuff like that. And I feel like it's sometimes in battle rap where it's probably not the same thing, 
but battle rap might go too far Talking sometimes. Talking about somebody that's dead. Yeah, because you even get the bars about when rappers die, and they might have died a few weeks prior to the battle, and niggas is already, you know, it's the mm-hmm. wound's still open. Like the Pat Stay, the, the dude in the South oh, that had the Pat gosh. Stay bars. Yeah. And all. I done heard Draco the Ruler bars. Mm-hmm. I've heard um, uh, Takeoff bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. like... That's a good point. Um, I think that, you know, in black and white, honestly, it is the same. Now that you say it, you're talking, mm-hmm. about, you're talking about somebody that's dead. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and you're saying it for, as a battle rapper, you're saying it for, for shock value from the fans. And as a drill artist or whatever the case is, you're saying it for shock value from the fans as well. Um, I, I, me personally, when I battle rap, if I'm battling somebody and like they have somebody that's dead that they know, I don't, that's not my thing. Like mm-hmm. I don't really get personal, but you know, for some people, that's the first thing they're going to do. Right. So it's generally speaking, if I'm talking about battle rap, Hey, if you're going to say something, as long as you're okay with, with what happens after it, mm-hmm. you know? So with the drill, I guess it's the same, mm-hmm. you know, but I feel like just the difference with the drill is that, um, they're they're talking more so about actual like shit that they did gang too. violence yeah <laughs> like, yeah right. you know what I'm saying like shit that they it's did more personal yeah and, and mm-hmm. they're they're dragging it yeah they're dragging yeah. it but essentially it is the same though mm-hmm. nah that was a good point essentially it is the same nah absolutely so 17 year old jazz starts <sighs> I mean so 13 year old jazz starts writing bars mm-hmm. people in the neighborhood and in your school are like yo you nice MySpace. MySpace. Mm-hmm. You start doing, and like people, you start getting a little like fake buzz and yep. shit start coming up. Then 17 year old jazz starts performing mm-hmm. in clubs and all that. And at what point are you like, I want to battle rap? Um, so I started battle rapping when I just turned 19. And it wasn't a thing of, I want to. Somebody called me and suggested that I should. I was a fan of battle rap, though, so I knew exactly what they was talking about. Um, and it was Debo. So I did Um P's radio show. Mm. And I love this story. I love telling the story because... Break it down. I'm sure you've told it before. I've told it a yeah, million yeah. times, but I never Tell it again. It. <laughs> so basically, um, Um P had a radio show. And you know Nino Man? Mm-hmm. So I... So my, this one, I got hot off MySpace, right? And I done traveled to to the Bronx in Harlem. Now, mind you, I don't know how y'all. I don't know if y'all know much about New York, but when you're from a certain borough, there's really no reason for you to go to other especially borough. Brooklyn. Like and, yeah. everything is yeah, right I, there. There's no reason for you to go to Queens, the Bronx. If I'm going to Manhattan, it's Times Square. I'm not yeah. going to Harlem. So this is my first time. Really, I'm 17. This is my first time really going out of the borough. I'm going to Harlem, the Bronx to fuck with Nino Man and Hood Rich and all that. Like I was part of the team and everything. So he hooked me up with Um P. Um P was having a ladies' night, so it was going to be a bunch of women on there, a bunch of uh, women rappers. And people don't realize Um P was like, I mean, he's yeah. still one of them dudes. Yeah. Like, but like, at the time, one of like the most respected mm-hmm. lyricists in the city and right. all that. Like, like, it was, I was, I was like, oh, I was nervous and everything. Yeah. So it was supposed to be a bunch of women, and none of them showed up but me. Wow. Yeah. And he's like, you came from all the way from Brooklyn. Like, I'm talking, like, the, the bottom of the map to the top of the map. That's mm-hmm. how far it was. I'm like, yeah, it was me and my cousin. So um, the whole interview was really about me, and I was able to rap. But because I was by myself, I was able to rap longer than I probably would have. So mm-hmm. I rapped for, like, a good about seven, eight minutes through different beats. And I actually have it uploaded yeah. on my YouTube. Like, I used to record everything I did. Have it on my YouTube. Boom. Debo sees me, DMs me. I didn't know about Queen of the Ring. It was new. I just knew about Grind Time and um, URL. He DMs me. Hey, I have this lead, Queen of the Ring. I think you should battle rap. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not aggressive enough. I'm not mean enough. These people are mean. <laughs> and he's like, well, just, you know, come to an event, see if you like it. I'm like, all right, cool. At this time, I knew DNA and Newborn. So DNA told me, not, don't do it. Newborn told me, do it, because he felt I had the ability to now turn my punchlines into battle rap bars. Why DNA said don't do it? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I want to say it might have been along the lines of, once you do it, you're going to get sucked in. And mm. I know that you're trying to be an artist. He was right. Oh, he was absolutely right. Yeah. He was absolutely right. But I don't regret nothing I've done in battle rap, because then I wouldn't be here right now. Now, do you... Somewhere... <laughs> my somewhere... There you go. <laughs> somewhere in the multiverse... There is 
a reality that exists where you listen to DNA's advice and didn't you feel like you could have gone the distance and just had a flourishing rap career outside of the so. context of that? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think that, um, you know, because like I said, I still was getting popular like um, on MySpace and YouTube and stuff like that. I had Nino Man behind me, like he was lit. Um, so I do think I still would have been popular as an artist. Mm -hmm. As far as how big I am in battle rap, I don't know if it would have been equal. Mm. You know, sometimes I got to sit back and really realize, okay, I'm jazz the rapper, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. I got to start thinking about, yo, I have this many followers. I go anywhere. Somebody's going to notice me. You know, things like that. Like, sometimes it's hard to really grasp that because you're you, but I got to sit back a lot. I think over the past maybe year and a half, I've kind of started realizing, hold on, this is this is big. Yeah. Like, this is big. Like, so I just, I'm just happy that I became a battle rapper. Did like, you, happy. Did you ever go through any, like, discouraging moments where you was like, fuck, I should have listened to DNA? Mm-mm. If, if, if I did say that, it wasn't, like, on some, like, I'm ready to quit. Mm -hmm. Like, it's never been that. It's just been, damn, I, I don't know the last time I recorded a song. DNA was right. Damn, I ain't got no focus on my music. Or, damn, I'm not consistent with the music. But... I've never felt like I wanted to leave battle rap for anything other than money. It was no other reason. And it, it's crazy because you always floated on beats. Like, I remember your grinding freestyle. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite ones, and this is when I knew you were super crazy, was the, um, what was the, what was the Kendrick song that... Uh, um, Humble? No, 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 no. Like, remember the one, the control. 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 I did rap over that. And you blacked I gotta on that. To that because I don't remember what I said on that. I, I, I even remember, <laughs> I, not only do I remember it, I remember I thought it was super cute slash funny. You were like, like, uh, excuse me, Mr. Lamar, I'd like to borrow your beat. Like, I hope you don't mind that I borrowed your beat. Like, wow. you said that before you started rapping, and I That's was like, crazy. You called him Mr. I Lamar. I remember that. I was like, yeah. I know yeah. it's on my YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's on my YouTube. I gotta listen to that. That's crazy. Because that, that was what, probably 2013, I think that was popping. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, and um, I remember one of your original songs, actually, and uh, you were talking about staying true to yourself and not compromising your image and mm -hmm. selling out by one way, right. One way by being like leaning into being sexy and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, like, you know, there's times where like, we'll see you in a dress. We'll see you having fun, cutting loose, twerking. There's twerk jazz out there, but like, but you still like maintain yeah. your integrity and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. You know what it is with, so what that song was really about was, and Honestly, this I probably made that like maybe 2016. Um, that song was really just about female rappers and how a lot of female rappers felt like they had to change how they looked to to be successful. And honestly, in 2023, I could say that I was right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the female rappers just kind of look the same. Like they just look the same. You know what I mean? I don't don't matter what complexion you are, y'all look the same. And y'all are becoming successful, but it's a thing about is that success organic? And that that leads me to um, when people like become famous overnight, like off TikTok or Instagram, it's like bittersweet to me because these fans are new, so they're not attached to you, right? So you'll be hot for the one, two, or three songs, but after that, who's really sticking with you because they don't know you. They don't know your story. They don't mm -hmm. know where you came from. They don't know who you are from a hole in the wall, and they're going to jump right to the next person. So... It's like when you go viral, I feel like everybody doesn't go through it, but you have to be really smart when you go viral. Mm. Like you need to start getting these fans like clinging to you. Don't just have them holding on to the music. They need to like you as a person because when once you have people that like you as a person, they're going to respect, they're going to rock with you throughout whatever you do, whatever you got going. You got your core fan base. And I learned that through battle rap. Yeah, well, that battle rap. and like with virality, it's interesting. Like people it's difficult to transcend that viral moment, right? Because mm -hmm. we, it's this one clip and it could be just because you say something that resonates with, that's compatible with TikTok, but doesn't really, people aren't gonna necessarily be drawn to you or any other content you create. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of weird. Um, right now, we've been saying this a lot, like every year there's like a big trend in hip hop. And um, last year, maybe the last couple of years I'll say is like the year, 
women were like the big thing in hip hop, in particular, like quote unquote thought rap. You know, you had like City Girls, Lotto, Ice Spice, mm-hmm. Glorilla, like, and they're, they're dope. Like, these are talented artists. Like, I rock with them. And there's a lot of more examples. That's just a few of them. Mm-hmm. But that's like what dominated. Like, what, what are your thoughts on that style of, you know, basically like, the the nieces of Cardi B yeah. taking over the rap game. Um, I think I think that um, yeah. Not that you said Cardi B because I was gonna say I think it started with City Girls, but it's probably Cardi B. Really, but Nikki, then City Cardi, Girls, yeah. really Nikki. Cities. But see, I think the difference between Nikki and them is a lot of Nikki songs have substance. Right, like mm-hmm. a lot of them. Like, but N- Nikki's the, the goat. Yeah, the the female rappers you named, the substance is the same. The content is the same. But um. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Like, you know, like I said, every we ha- we always have trends in music, and that's just what was hot. That's what people want to hear. I like to listen to that shit. I like to listen to a lot of music, um, and just because like that's not what I want to rap about doesn't mean I can't listen to it. I like it. Mm-hmm. Everything is a is a trend. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be here forever. You know what I mean? And then that just that just points the difference to who's really an artist and who's not. Who's really doing this for attention and popularity and who's not? If you could really rap, then you're going you gonna to last through that. I fuck with Lotto, though. You mentioned Lotto. I like Lotto. Lotto's nice. I like Lotto. What made like you Lotto. push the limit on that Vixen battle when you said, because um, speaking of that, like, you don't rap about that type of stuff. But when you said, um, if Smack got a taste of this, I own, I own the whole company. <laughs> you, like, when I say you shock the fuck out of me, because you don't rap about shit like that, yeah. you know? What yeah. made you push them and say, I'm finna just say this? Um, so a part of it is really because like, like, you know, y'all know, I came in when I was 18, 19 and I was diversion and I was in school. So a lot of people looked at me as the little sister and in battle rap, when you start at a certain age, you don't age to people, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm 31 now, but every time I say that, it's like, people don't believe it. Yep. Are you 31? You was older than me this whole time, and it's like I don't believe it. You're sick because it's crazy, like because you were the child prodigy, and right, yeah, yeah. And it's like I get it, totally get it. Especially because what I feel like, what obviously you know, you wasn't the same when you was nineteen, right? You know what I mean. But I think me being a virgin added to it, and me losing my virginity and and finding myself as a woman and and, and coming into my my sexiness that. It was like almost magnified because now I'm a public figure. So you're seeing these changes because I'm always on camera. Mm-hmm. So that adds to it. I didn't just go from 19 to 31. I went from 19 and a version to 25, not a version. So it's it's just double what it is. So since the Gaddis battle, I kind of made it a thing to show y'all I'm a grown ass woman. Mm. You feel me? Like, I'm doing it purposely. The pipe took you to the next level. Right. I'm a grown-ass woman. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when she said that, I was like, yeah, yes. You feel me? I was me? there. You so are? Yeah, I'm just, yeah, bitch. Yeah. yeah. Like, so it's just, you know, <laughs> and different. I'm going to make it make sense while I'm saying it because that it was kind of bothering me. Like, sometimes it used to bother me a lot that people just, like, I, even if I'm drinking my thought juice, they're just like, Oh, why you are you acting like I'm grown? Yeah, I'm grown. <laughs> me me. Oh, why are you dressing like that? Cause I want to. I'm grown. Mm-hmm. I'm grown. So with with the vixen line, um, I knew niggas be horny. I knew me saying that was you know what I'm saying it's gonna make people react, but also it just it just adds to it. Like damn, I right, jazz is grown for real now. Like even it it all comes down to everything. Even the, the way I dressed, like mm-hmm. the way I dressed in that battle, it was like. You know, Vixen came on her sexy shit. You feel me? If I was to come sexy, niggas would be like, what is Jazz doing? Mm-hmm. Like, why are you doing that? I'm going to still look good, and I'm going to be sexy in my own way. But, you know, the way she did it was more like a like a seductive sexy. Mm-hmm. You know, mine is more of a swag, confidence, sexy, mm-hmm. you know, show a little little skin a little bit. But um, You but have yeah. that sex appeal, though, without even trying. Because even if, like, the, the hair at the Geechee battle... <laughs> no. Just like, oh, you know. nah, yeah, it's, it's, I, yeah, I think how you look as a battle rapper is a mm-hmm. lie, especially as a woman. As yeah. a woman, because our fan base is 80% men. Mm-hmm. Facts. 80% men, like, no less than that. So men are visual people. Now, granted, it's just battle rap. If you're pretty or not, they paying attention to the bars, but 
if you looking like something, they're going to want to look at you more. They're going to yeah. want to watch you more. You're going to get more fans like that. So just down to just how I look is 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 important to me. Like, I'm not coming in looking like anything. I think the version angle makes you even more desirable, too, because people is like, I want to be the first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to crack that. that. Yeah. 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 They. Yeah. That used to be weird. <laughs> Yeah. It used to be real weird. But I'm like, I'm fake a troll like online. Like I really troll a little bit. Like I troll with people sometimes. So you know how like, you know how like sometimes when people, like if a guy compliments you, right? Mm -hmm. And then somebody else would be like, yo, chill, she not going to let you hit, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I respond like, how you know? Yeah. <laughs> how you know I'm not going to let him hit? I right. might give him some. I'm really might. That yeah. might have been the comment to make me, like I troll because it's like, why do y'all, act like that like why do y'all act like you know women have to be a, a certain way or just because you looked at me this way this is just how i'm always gonna be that's also like dirty macking and side busting Super too like you know what yeah, i mean like, like, like oh cool. she don't like you like you're yeah. not she like me really like yeah, yeah. that's some hater shit like, what's yeah. the creepiest like and you don't gotta call the person out like what's the creepiest request to take your virginity like who just <laughs> just says some shit just let me get that v i've never had well let me not say nothing. let me get that v i just don't recall <laughs> anybody being Creepy. I'm sure there were fans that were weird, mm -hmm. but I'm, you have a uh, super uh, like obsessed male fan base. I do. I do. I think just because naturally I'm a person that's very just nonchalant. A lot of things don't bother me, so things like that don't really stick to me. They mm -hmm. just kind of just bounce off of me when I see it. So I can't really remember. Like I've I've been battle rapping for 12 years, so I've gotten a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. I just don't really remember anybody being creepy about my virginity. Do you consider yourself a tomboy? Um, I would say I used to be more so. I would say if I had to put a percentage on it right now, whew, I changed a lot. I probably would say I'm like 25% tomboy. Okay. Maybe it was like 60 at one point? Yeah. When I, when I was like, I'll say since I started when I was from 19 to maybe 23 it was very just snapbacks and, and, and Jordans. Then I got older, and I'm like, hmm, I want to start doing this. I want to start doing this. I started noticing myself liking pink. <laughs> like, what's going on with me? But yeah, so I'll say now, I'll say now it's like 25%. But and I'll be honest, I think that 25% probably only comes from how I, how I the the um comfortability I like to have the way I dress like this is not really a tomboy, but the hat makes it a tomboy. Mm -hmm. But I'm wearing a crop top and I'm wearing tight jeans with rips in it. You know what I mean? So it's like a, it's like I'm a balance. I have lip gloss on. The nails. Right, my nails. You know what I'm saying? So I've gotten way better. I've gotten way better. Do you like, so as far as like the whole virginity thing, I'm sure growing up you saw, like New York's a fast city, mm -hmm. just like LA. And I'm sure a lot of your homegirls are probably losing their virginity and like doing, getting yeah. down very I, I was the only young. one. I was on. The, I was the only one. Very young and like. Yeah. But you wasn't tripping on any type of pressure or nothing like that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I just thought about this post-it movie I made. Uh, do you follow me on Instagram? I do. You follow me on Twitter. I do. Did you see that post-it thing I made? I did not. <sighs> so, you know how people used to make movies out of post-its? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. little. I, could, yeah. I was freaky. Flip it. I made a porn one. <laughs> oh. It was fire, though. I used to draw, too, by the way. I used okay. to draw when I was, like, 10, 11, 12. Once I started rapping, it kind of went, you know, in the back. But they were, like, stick figures, though. But anyway, like... Um, stick figure porn is crazy. Yeah, it was fire. I'm going to show you the video when we... You know, it was fire. It was really good. Like, I actually was really proud of myself. <laughs> but anyway... How old are you at this time? Uh... I probably was like maybe 12, 13. I don't know if this is legal to watch. But <laughs> they were adults, though. Oh, okay, okay. No, they were adults. The sticks were okay, adults. Yeah, the sticks yeah. were adults. All right, as long as we clarify. They were definitely adults. Um, but yeah, like, as far as, like, you know, we all go through things. So I did feel the pressure to, to have sex just because I want to know what it's like. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just how we think. But it just never, it just never happened. Like, it just never happened. So then I think, I'm going to be honest, I think once I started battle rapping, it kind of made it easier for me to not lose it because now I'm like, damn, I don't know if this person is really, you know, really fuck with me like that. You feel me? Yeah. So it kind of, 
slow down the process. Like, I know that if I wasn't a battle rapper, I would have lost it way before 24. Mm. Way before. And if it wasn't in high school, it would have been between 18 and 24. And it wasn't no religious thing or nothing like that. No, I was just waiting for the right person, like somebody I was comfortable with. Were you dating? When? Before I lost it? Yeah. Yeah, I was dating. You had boyfriends? And were I, they cool with... I wouldn't say I had boyfriends, but I had, I guess, situations. Like, mm-hmm. people I was talking to. Um, and, yeah, like, they never pressured me into doing it. They never pressured me. You're I'm a unicorn, always, you know that? They never pressured me. I I, I don't know. I think, I think it's just the vibe. You know what it is? You know how you don't want to mess up a friendship? Mm-hmm. I think it was that. I think it was, Jazz is so cool. I don't want to pressure her and she feel a type of way and now I done just lost the whole friendship too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Or it might have just been, well, this is Jazz the rapper. I don't want this to come. Like, it could have been anything. I don't know. But I've never been pressured, pressured. Like, Did you good. ever have any near moments though where you almost was going to lose your virginity and then it was just no, like, cause no, because I knew, I knew, I knew off rip, this is not who I want to lose my virginity to. Yeah. This is not, like, whether we was doing whatever, foreplay, whatever the case is, I knew, I'm going to know, this ain't who I, this ain't who I want to lose my virginity to. And I never felt a, a need. I never felt a rush for it. Like, you know what, I'm going to just get it over with. Like, mm-hmm. so my first time was, my first time was fire. Like, it was like, I, like it, my, I'm grateful for my first time because I hear a lot of stories about people first times that they don't like their first time. They hated it. You know, I loved mine. It was out of a movie. My first time was nothing like what IMX said it would be. Brum. <laughs> My, 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 my first time, I was soft as a motherfucking noodle. Oh, like, that shit didn't even work. Oh, my God. Wait, so, okay, so you lost your virginity at 24. How did you know that that person was the person that I'm going to get a box to? Um, so we was talking for a few months. Feelings was there. You know what I mean? Feelings were getting stronger. And, yeah, he didn't pressure me or nothing. Like, it, it happened, though. And mm-hmm. I wanted it to It happened because I wanted it to happen. You know what I mean? Um, don't regret it. Don't regret it at all. And yeah, it was, it was, yeah. We Where was in a relationship. Huh? Where's that lucky man now? Y'all still together? No, we're not still together. Mm. We're not still together. Shout outs to him, though. If you watch Battle Rap, you know who it is. Shout Well, actually, if you, you know, you know. If yeah. you know, you know. I-Y-K-Y-K. Yeah, Y-K. yeah but we, we're cordial, though. We're cordial. Oh, he's from the Battle Rap community? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And nobody hasn't put it in the bar? Not for me. For him? Oh, he get the whole clip. It's wild it on him. <laughs> I don't even see why that's like an angle. That should be like a badge Hello? of honor. Like that's you why, should be happy yeah. about that's that. That's why it's not, it's an angle, but it's not a, a, a detrimental angle. That's not an effective angle. Because the most you can just say is, oh, she's bigger than you. That's the most you can say. Which is true, to be fair. It is, but oh, yeah, she is. And? Yeah. So, so it's kind of like, all right, y'all going to mention jazz, but... Are you better than me? <laughs> yeah. But nobody has ever used it against me because he's not really popular. Like, he's not mm-hmm. really known in the battle rap community. Very dope, however. That yeah. could be an angle, too, though. It can, but you know what the problem is? People just don't... People people just... They're not creative not clever enough. enough. Yeah, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Because an angle like that is tricky, too, especially now. Mm-hmm. That was so long ago. Like, right. you gonna rap about something from, from eight years ago, whatever, how long it was, right. like... Come on! If you was gonna do it, you should have did it. Yeah. When it when it was a thing, but I'm transcended. How does um stuff like that spread within the battle rap community? Is it because somebody just put it in a bar, or it's because niggas is gossiping? Because I remember when you addressed the the situation with uh, somebody giving you head, and you dipped on them. <laughs> <laughs> How did people even find out about that? He told mm-hmm. in an interview. Actually, most uh-huh. people don't do stuff like that, though. Most people don't tell shit in interviews. Uh-huh. He's just very special. Yeah. He's a, he's a special kid. Messy. Yeah, he he's always he's always in a lot of um drama. Actually, I kind of commend him because he didn't say anything for 5 years. So, it was like, "Oh, shout out to you for that. You did way better than I thought you would." I thought it was going to come out like 3 days later. Are and you're are you a virgin at this time you got hair from him? No. Or you had already lost your virginity? I already lost my virginity. Were you nervous about your... I mean, I don't know if you got a second body, but... Was you, I nervous? No. Yeah. Was it like, do I have to go through a whole uh, process to figure out if you the right one to... Nope. ...to fuck second? Nope. <laughs> do you... After, f- that, after I broke the seal, it was like, 
all right, cool. And I was just like, again, I'm still cautious about, you know what I'm saying, who mm-hmm. I'm having sex with or whatever the case mm-hmm. is, but it just wasn't the same. It wasn't mm-hmm. the same process. Like, no, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And you're, you, like you said, you're a whole adult out here. You know what I mean? And it's, <laughs> it's, I was always an adult. You, you were always an adult. Now but you're a grown woman. Yeah, you, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. Grown ass woman. A <laughs> grown ass woman. Little sis or not, it don't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. little sis, but I'm grown. Right. Respect right. me. I mean, and all y'all that call her little sis, y'all got a few grays, you know, got you got a little bit of mm-hmm. salt in you, got a little salt in your pepper. Mm-hmm. Um, is there do you feel like you've been like a source of inspiration for other young women that are like, yo, you don't have to give up the box like that. Like, you could stay a virgin. Have have you been approached or, like, hit up yeah. by other girls? Like, I actually got hit up by more fathers than girls. Oh, I'm mm. sure. Like, way more. Like, oh, my daughter watches you and woo-woo, or my daughter is only four years old and, and, you know, I wish that she would, you know, look up to you or, you know what I'm saying, like, you, you motivate her. But, yeah, it, it kind of... Um, it was dope. Like it was just a dope feeling when it when it used to happen. It doesn't happen anymore. But um <laughs> That ship done sailed. That ship has sailed. <laughs> but you know, like you said, like even though I might, you know, do certain things or you might see me partying or whatever the case is, I'm gonna still carry myself in a way that's still not embarrassing or mm-hmm. that's just like ew, like, oh, this person, oh, she's a totally different person. Like, like honestly, it's crazy because the image that people gave me, I it kind of um, forced me to hold myself back a lot. Mm. Like, I would be drinking and I wouldn't post that I'm drinking just because people going to say, oh, you're drinking? I know you're fucking. Mm. Right. It used to bother me because it was like, that's so ignorant. Damn it, here I come with the thought juice. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, before, before all that, like... I would hold myself back from just, you know, wanting to post what I'm doing. So you don't ruin the perspective that somebody, that they all got it wasn't you in a, their head? Nah, it wasn't ruining it. It was the responses I would get. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, she a virgin. I know she fucking. Oh, she had a club with eight niggas. I know she fucking one of mm-hmm. them. You know what I mean? And it's like, it, it's just annoying. Every time I post, I got to see something about my virginity just because I'm doing something mm-hmm. that... A 21-year-old should be doing. Mm-hmm. Right. I drink, but I just don't have sex. What's the big deal? And there's a lot of 21-year-old girls getting damn trains yeah. ran on them and stuff. To I be go to the club. I just don't have sex. Do you yeah. think you'll ever get tired of the virgin angle and people talking about you in in the battles? And even like with the operator shit. Nah. Right? No. I never get tired of it. Well, now niggas gotta come with a new angle. I never get you tired quit your of job, it. Right? Yeah. I'll never get tired of it because, I mean, there's always an angle because now they're going to say, oh, you quit your job. <laughs> Why you quit your job? <laughs> like, um, but yeah, I never get tired of of old angles because I know that they're not going to work. Yeah. The, the fans is going to judge you of that. Mm-hmm. I have nothing to do with that. I just know I'm coming here to rap and I'm coming here to beat your ass. So you can use these old angles. You got to convince the fans that, that you won the battle. Well, it's, it's, you know, and I commend you on the fact that not just on like some sexual shit, but we're all a family in battle rap, yeah. a dysfunctional one, but mm-hmm. we all a family. That's all We've facts. known each other for a long time. Even the people we don't get along with, we still want to see him do good at mm-hmm. the end of the day. And we know everybody's dirty laundry to, to an extent. Mm-hmm. You never had anything crazy on your jacket like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. Um, you kept it solid. We had never heard about you doing no weird shit. He never heard you about being super freaky out mm-hmm. here, thoughting out here, like, you just kept it really, you know. Is that intentional? Are you, like, a safe person, or it just happened to work out like That's that? That's just me. Like, yeah. I'm not I'm not into the drama. I'm not into the being friends with people and talking about them behind their back. I'm not into telling people's business. I'm just a regular, cool-ass person that I'm going to be cool with everybody. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like if you have a problem with jazz, you don't have a logical explanation as to why. You, you kind of, you kind of. Even like, if, even, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but even if you feel like it's certain things that I don't like that jazz does, mm-hmm. but that's not going to automatically make you, I don't fuck with jazz. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, we're a dysfunctional fa- family. Mm-hmm. It's battle rappers that I hate when they do certain things. I hate when they do that. I hate when she do that. But I'm not about to say, I don't like this person. So that's just how I've been. So like the QP shit, that actually, no, my job and the QP shit is the first two things that were really like, 
angles like mm -hmm. that could be negative you feel me but the which is crazy it's not like, really you, negative you got your pussy hey, wow like you know what I mean I, like, yo when it came out I was watching the internet lose their minds I'm like bro y'all really acting like this about me getting ahead <laughs> yeah five years ago y'all don't want to know what I did yesterday <laughs> And, and he was, and he was, it's <laughs> like, it's not no, like he really. was like, it's not like I tried to go down on her and it was foul as fuck. Like, her right. pussy nasty. It's like he, like, what exactly did he say? So he was doing, there's a, um. Shout out to my dog, by the way. There was well. a, in a, no. <laughs> there was a, um, there's a, uh, a interviewer, like her thing is called Naked Battle Rap. So she asked battle rap because then she asked him sexual questions. Mm -hmm. So she asked him, have you ever done anything sexual with a battle rapper? And he mm -hmm. was like, yeah, I. I gave head to Jazz the rapper. She was like, oh, "You gave head to her?" He was like, "Yeah." She was like, "Well, did she give you head back?" He was like, "No." I she respect like, the honesty. Oh. Yeah, she was like, "I respect the honesty too," because he could have sixty-eight. No, you yeah. one. Yeah. He could have easily said, "And then it would people been, would have automatically just believed it would have been his word against mine." Yeah. But um, so she was like, "Okay, yeah, that's cool." And then, you know, some people was like, "Oh, if um, QP's protecting her, if she." If she let him give her head, I know they fucked, and like that's not how it works. Did you guys have a conversation after that hit the internet? Probably, but I don't really remember what it was. Was um, you tripping when you heard it? Like, why would he say that? I told you, I was waiting. Yeah. So it was just kind of like, I'm happy he said it when he said it, but I feel like he did it because I had a battle coming up. It was like perfect mm -hmm. timing. You know what I mean? Oh, let me throw that out there but the thing is he waited he he gave me too much time to be able to write something to address it so mm. i addressed it with the goddess battle T to me like too much time to me i wasn't sur like a surprise that you you know had like a sexual moment with someone yeah. i was more, i was tripping on the fact that it was him considering yeah. like if you follow if you know who this guy is he's a very yeah, nobody would expect he's a controversial be. figure Jazz? in Can battle rap yeah. no that's facts i get it like, like the most was... wholesome and least wholesome person in battle rap yeah. together you know what you right <laughs> yeah you right so qp like a perfect love story to qp me. is I mean, a love, yeah. is a he is just over the top mm -hmm. over the top uh he was on Maury. Yep. He was yep. on Maury Povich. Yeah. Like, like you are not the father. Da, 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 da. Like, what? Yeah, 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 he's over the top. Just, just, it's a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like polar opposites. How yeah. the hell did Jazz link up with QP? Yeah. And I think it just, it just happened. It just happened. It happened. It just happened. Like, I, like, I probably think that might have been, like, my second or third time being around him. Mm. We've known each other. Mm -hmm. We've had conversations. But it was just the second, third time, boom, it just happened. Whoop you whoop. you addressing it in that battle. And even, well, first of all, the whole battle, period, like, you was on some B-Rabbit shit. <laughs> you was oh, like, yeah. I'm about to say everything that, bitch, I know you're going to say. Yeah. Even when yeah. you had told her, like, ah, ha, ha, I knew she was going to talk about my job. I knew it. And then you said, yeah, bitch, they going to call me to, uh, what, I forgot what you said exactly. I don't want to get the bars. I, but. I said something like. Oh, I think if something happened to you and you call 911, you better hope they, they don't, don't get me. me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like that, because it was just, I didn't battle in so long. So it was a lot in the three years mm -hmm. that I needed to talk about. Mm -hmm. The job thing came out, you feel me? And granted, the thing it is with jobs and battle rap, they're not a bad thing. Yeah. But I'm going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I talked about Vixen and her job. But it was like, it's not the fact that you have a job. It's the job that you have, so now I'm going to make bars out of it. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. If I'm battling you, I'm going to rap about you being an interviewer. Mm -hmm. No matter how successful you are, you could be the number one. You could be Oprah. Yeah. I'm wilding on you. Yeah. Because Feel free to throw me in the next. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, you, like, it doesn't matter how successful you are with whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. If I have something to talk about, I'm going to talk about it. So I'm like, all right, my job. I know she's going to talk about my job. I might as well do it, too. Were you hiding the job? I mean, it wasn't necessarily a hiding thing. It just wasn't a, I'm not going to put out my job. Right, right. Nobody's going to do, no battle rap is going to put out information. Yeah. Hey, guys, here's an angle for you. Yeah. I'm not going to put out. Yeah. Hey, guys, I did this with this battle rapper. Yeah. There you go. Right. That's not going to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So How, how did it come out? So I guess um, Misfit knew somebody that was working there, and they texted it to her. What? Mm -hmm. That's kind of, that's super lame. And then Misfit, like, put out a blog and stuff. I'm not going to lie. Like, that situation, the QP situation, I didn't really care about because it was so long ago and mm -hmm. I don't look crazy. The um the job situation, I woke up to it. 
And I'm like, I'm seeing YouTube. I'm seeing tweets about it. It didn't really blow up yet. It, had, it took a few hours to marinate. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, how am I going to respond to this? Like, you know what I'm saying? And then I finally came over with a response, just responded to her. You know the fans, they, oh, Jasmine Misfit, Jasmine Misfit, because she wanted to battle me. That's and I been, wasn't accepting the battle. That's been, like, talked about since early Queen mm -hmm. of the Ring days. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't accept the battle, still haven't. Mm -hmm. um, so she kind of put all of that out for no reason because, like, everybody has had bars about it before I even battled Gaddis. Mm -hmm. I didn't battle till a year after that information came out. So it was battle rappers just having bars for people with my job. Mm -hmm. I'm like, get all them bars out so my opponents don't got nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest, I think since I popped back out, the, the, the 911 bars ain't really been in. Gaddis did it good. Yeah. But everybody else, it was just like, all right. Gaddis was, 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 hers was horrible. Yeah, I don't even, yeah, she didn't need that. Yeah. If you're going to do it, do it. Don't yeah. just say one line about it. Because as a fan, I know what I want to hear. I want to hear you talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's why with Geechee, when he did it, he did it the right way. Yeah. Because we want to hear somebody talk about this job. Yeah. How y'all just glossing over this 911 operator in battle rap? Talk about it. What was it like when you, when Magenta, I'm sorry, Lush. No, you didn't. What was it like when Magenta walked into work as Jazz the Rapper? Like when everybody at work knew that you were. Everybody still didn't know. So mm -hmm. it was just over time. Mm -hmm. You know, it was over time. Um, obviously working there is is a lot. I'll say most of the workers there are between 20 years old and probably like 35. Mm -hmm. Right? That's battle rap age for mm -hmm. real. So I'll get recognized sometimes and stuff like that. Some people tried to, you know, some people didn't want to blow me up. But it's like, dog, I I don't care. Did you know anyone I mean? recognize the voice on the mm -mm. phone? Okay. Can I hear your 911 operator voice? It depends on what time of the day it is, if I'm tired, if I'm in a good mood. I need when your shift start. When my shift start? Um, what shift, though? Because I used to work overnight. <laughs> I worked 3 to 11. I worked 7 to 3. 7 o'clock, I'm tired. A day that you want to nah, be there. Nah, it's, it's just like, uh, though, so the way New York does it is we do um, New York City 911. What's your emergency? You say it like that? New York City 911, what's your emergency? Yeah. I would. I think I would have recognized you. <laughs> <laughs> it, I'm bleeding out. I'm, Is this just nah, a I'm going to keep it a buck. I'm going to keep it a buck. A lot of callers, like, they'll call and they'll be like, I just spoke to you. No, you didn't. So I think that a lot of us sound the same on the yeah, phone, too. Yeah. But I do get what you're saying, because I do have a distinctive voice. Very I distinct have, voice. I have yeah. a sick yeah. obsession with all y'all voices out there. Like, who's all y'all? Like, New York people. Oh, 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 then you definitely wouldn't recognize my voice. We all talk the same. <laughs> like, what? Have you ever seen that meme where it's like... Like I, you, uh, New York women, you see them, they look good as hell, and then they open their mouth you and they sound, sound like, like a battle, battle rapper. rapper. You know how many times I got tagged in that? I love y'all. And I'd be mad because it's like, damn, y'all right though. But you don't look like if I saw you, I wouldn't think that. Especially like when you first came out, like, and mm -hmm. you're not like a tiny woman, but you're like, you know, Small. you're you're on the smaller, so you're yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, fun yeah. size, and um, but then you have like this commanding like. Yo, what's up, son? All right, Boy, you're yeah. dragging it. That's <laughs> don't, crazy. Don't get back on that her bad side, Lex. Yeah, don't get back on. That's crazy. Why you have to drag it like that? No, no, I'm just saying, like, the, the voice nah, is yeah. very distinct and powerful. Yeah, and yeah. Like, I've always been like that since I was a kid, though. Like, five years old, six years old, I used to answer the phone. My father used to be like, yeah, she's going to be shorty. Yeah, sure. your voice was always deeper than the normal. Like, you know, it's not like I sound like a man no, as you I'm don't. talking, but I have a deep, strong voice. And I kind of, it took me a while to embrace it, yeah. you know, like just being 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Older guys are telling me, you know, your voice is, you have a really good rapping voice. And it, I never really understood it until I got older and just started realizing why people liked it. Like, as especially as a female, there's a lot of times where th their voices could get annoying. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, your voice can get annoying. Even in real life, there's people with annoying voices. I don't watch my interviews back because I hate my voice. I swear to God, though, no, you, <laughs> no, you have a good voice. You have a super LA. Y'all are like the opposite. You have like the super South Central voice. She mm. got the super Brooklyn voice. It's just, but I, I swear <laughs> to God, your voice is so meant for rapping. Yes. I, I, your parents must have been listening to Big Daddy Kane when they conceived you or some shit. Honestly, like, yeah. I mean, I feel like my father probably was the heaviest influence of rap 
because my mom, she clearly didn't want me listening to it. But um, yeah, it probably would be my father. And again, um, I was watching battles from 13. Mm -hmm. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm watching battles, smack DVD, watching Grind Time. Who would have thought I would be one of That's the biggest hard. battle rappers in the world? Yeah. Like, that is crazy to me. Like, it's just crazy how the world works. But, um, but yeah, like, I just, like you said, with the voice, like, I started realizing how how strong my voice was, and I started flexing it more, mm -hmm. like, in the battles. Like, you can see my deliveries better because I started taking advantage. Like, my voice is... Well, not just my voice. My projection is better than a lot of women. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, let me just use that, you know? Because I might not be the most aggressive woman. Yeah. I might not perform the most. I might not have the best bars. I might have... I might not be the biggest stature, but that voice is kind of like... You have somebody in the room and say, yo! You have somebody and say, yo! Yeah. It's a difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like that's why you eat up the stage like you do? Because people can, you know, small rooms, they might be able to give you a fight. You feel me? It might come down to whoever's just hitting harder with the bars that day. But on that stage, yeah. you're undefeated. Like, it's crazy because I never liked the big stage. Never liked it. it. Yeah. I never liked it. Like... It turned, it changed. Like, mm -hmm. I never liked it. You would have never guessed it because I'm not going to show that. But I just did not like the big stage. I always felt like, um, it was a few reasons, you know, the crowd was a bit intimidating. But also, I felt like my writing style was more uh, intricate than it needed to be for a big stage. So once I started having to do big stages, because that's just where they're calling me for, I had to start writing like it. And personally... I don't want to dumb down my stuff, mm -hmm. but I know that it gets the people going. You I, know what I mean? It's like your voice and the pen, like, coupled together. That's what I feel like for me, because that's what draws me to you the most. It's mm -hmm. like your voice just makes me want to pay attention. Because there are battles that I'll watch, and f they if... If they sound stupid, it don't matter <laughs> what they saying. I just turn it off just mm -hmm. because their voice just does not pull me in. But your voice, the way you move, the way you bump and, you know, get all up on people is just all powerful yeah. all together. Yeah, I think, um, you know, like you said, I think my voice is a big reason I kind of stood out. Um, and it's not even just being from New York. It's the voice. Because there's so many other women rappers from, from New York. But it's the voice, but also... Um, like you said, the pen, um, if you're really listening to me, because it's, it's, you know, some fans that's like, oh, jazz is all gas. You know what I mean? And they're going to say that, but it bothers me a little bit because it's like, I don't know, y'all, y'all not really listening to what I'm saying, like how I'm putting this together, like all the thoughts and the, in the setups that I'm, that I'm going through. So a lot of people do appreciate that. So I think, honestly, I think the way I put together my bars and put together my rounds is a big reason why I could dominate a lot mm -hmm. because you know what's gonna work women, in that context. Men too, just all battle rappers. It's hard. Like a lot of battle rappers don't really structure. Mm. They just rap. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. There's a select handful of of battle rappers that are they making. All right, I'm putting this there because woo dee woo dee woo. But it's like a lot of battle rappers, battle rappers don't care about that, and it's okay. It's absolutely okay. But for people like me, I need organization. Yeah. I need to know all right, how I'm attack this person. Why am I attacking them this way? And this down the third. It, it, it's a lot though. It's a lot. Everybody is not that tedious. I am. But that setup is important because the way you rap, even with surf, like y'all can say something a couple bars behind and then it makes sense when it gets to the, the mm -hmm. end of the round probably, yeah. you know? So yeah. that is important. I yeah. Free the wave. Is. Free the wave. Free like, the wave. Like some people, let's say the punch is, um, let's say the punch is I leave your pink feet like Gina, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I would set it up with probably shit around the room. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But somebody else might set it up with that has nothing to do with nothing. I beat on bitches like I can Tina. Right. Yeah. I go outside and see my mom's like, have you seen her? Mm -hmm. And then get to the punch. It has nothing to do with mm -hmm. nothing. I'm going to make it have something to do with something because now it just makes it that much better, mm -hmm. you know? But that comes down to, you know, that could come down to lazy writing. Yeah. Um, a lot of battle rappers write really lazy. And for me, I'm big. I'm quality over quantity. I'm big on when you see me, you're going to be 
uh, very happy about what you mm -hmm. just watched. The integrity of your pen is something that you've always held really near and dear to you from the jump. We've had a lot of controversies in the past several years around not just women, but in particular, like female battle rappers not penning their own bars. Mm -hmm. um, last year, there was a whole thing about battle rappers rehearsing together before the battle. Like, I know that's got to, does that irk your nerves as someone that's just like, has so much respect for the craft? It used to. It used to. It used to scuff my Tims. <laughs> like, just early on when I would just hear about, yeah, he wrote that for her. And you're like, what? Like, I used to be heartbroken, for real, for real. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I started realizing, you know, I can't worry about nobody but me. Mm. I live my truth. I know I'm writing my own shit. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like, and like you said, like, with angles, it was always something that was like, I know I write my own shit. So anything you say about me, I don't care as long as I know I wrote my own shit. Or like, yeah. oh, jazz don't battle or not. Okay, I write my own shit. Y'all, I know I don't battle a lot, but the time that I do take to write, it's mine. This mm -hmm. is mine. I came up I came up with this, you know? And it's just kind of like, why are you a battle rapper if you have people write for you? Like, mm -hmm. I get it, battle rap is cool, but it's really, it's other things that you could be doing. Yeah, this, this is the whole, that's the whole point is like being the best lyricist possible. That's, that's Hello. Mm -hmm. that, it's like using steroids and be in, in the Olympics. It don't even make sense. Like It's like, okay, you what you want, the fame, the popularity? Do yeah. something else. Why you got a battle rap? Right. Do one of those, bro. Yeah. What would you say your, was your easiest body? Mmm. Easiest body? I mean, you had someone have a straight health scare in the middle of a battle. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Damn, you know what? I got so many that I'm... I probably would say... You know, it's weird because I like... When I answer questions like this, I like to think of it from both sides, right? So it could be easiest body on who was the easiest to beat, or it could be easiest body... It was easy for me to write for them, and I smoked them, right? So my first battle, was it easy for me to write that battle? No, because it was my first battle. Mm -hmm. But it was a body, and mm -hmm. she wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. But then you might have somebody like a Gaddis. Like, legend. Right, mm -hmm. a legend. But it's like, I went in there feeling like I'm, I'm going to smoke her. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to voice that. But I went in there feeling like that, but that's because of how much I knew I grew from 2019 to 2021. Mm -hmm. I knew that it would be too much. She hadn't seen me. So, you know, she only could go off my old battles, which is a bad thing because that's not that's not the new jazz. Yeah. That's the old jazz. So um, I'll probably say between my first battle and um, yes. the Gaddis battle. But I did work really hard to prepare those rounds because I had so much to talk about, mm -hmm. you know, but I still had to beat her. Same time. You're a sick strategist. You really like put a lot into it. <laughs> yeah. It's um it's bad and good. I, I, you know, like like I said at the beginning of the interview, you know, greatest female battle rapper of all time. Um and I when you look at a lot of the the top man, men that are in that, you know, like the mooks and the luxes, mm -hmm. for example, they're very choosy about their battles and they go for years without battling, mm -hmm. you know, as well. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Now, your longest gap, I think, was like a little more than three years between battles. No, or? it was that one. It was that it was that gap, the 2019 and 2021. Okay. But the way people tried to drag it just to say, Jazz don't battle a lot. Jazz didn't have a solo battle for right. five years. Right. So what happened was 2017, I battled E-Heart. 2018, I went to London and battled Shuffle T, but they didn't want to count that battle. But if I would have got cooked, they would have counted it. No, that shit that's counts. Topic. Shuffle's a legend, too. That's another so, topic. Yeah, that's... And it's crazy because, like, back, I'm going to get back to that, but like you said, I'm selective. When they hit me up to battle in London, I wasn't just going to take it just because it was in London, even though I've never been. And I love London now. But I was like, who? Who do you want me to battle? Shuffle T. I didn't know who he was. Looked him up. I said, like, oh, he's really loved here. Mm -hmm. I would definitely do it. But if it was somebody that was low tier or mid tier, I wouldn't have did it. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. I'm going to take the people that are the people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do the in-betweens because I don't battle a lot. I don't want to waste my time. So 2018, I did Shuffle T. 2019, I did the two-on-two -two with Official when we battled 40 and E-Heart. Then I didn't battle. I love me some O. Come on. Hello, Bardashian shit. 
Then I didn't battle 2020. And then I came out 2021. So it doesn't feel that long when I explain it. Right. But people just wanted to drag it and say, Jazz hasn't had a solo battle in five years. So we don't really know what, what she going to... You know what I'm saying? But that two-on-two two that I did with Official was, to me, that was the start of new jazz. That was the start of the jazz that would now be comfortable on the big stage because that was a huge room. And the outcome of it, even though I had a partner, I learned a lot about myself. You know, she taught me a lot. I taught her a lot. And it was just kind of like, all right, let me take that jazz and apply it to the jazz that's now popping out. Mm -hmm. So it really was two years, honestly. It was two years. But two years in battle rap is a long time. I appreciate it, though, because it's battle rappers who I keep seeing where it's like it kind of get played out. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the longer you wait to battle, the more highly anticipated that next battle is going to be. Because now when I'm seeing trailers and shit, oh, shit, Jazz about to battle Geechee. Jazz and Vixen, oh, my God. You know, so I think that makes it more of a want for the fans. Yeah, people appreciate it more. Like, it's like, okay... I haven't seen this person in a while. Now I'm ready to see them, you know? But Mm -hmm. it's, you gotta, I think you should have a happy medium, right? You don't gotta battle once a year, twice a year, but oversaturating yourself kind of makes people um, not appreciate you as much, Mm -hmm. no matter how great you are. Like, if Mook and Lux were battling seven times a year, they wouldn't have the same prestige that they hold. It doesn't matter that they were pioneers. They just wouldn't have that same prestige. Mm -hmm. And that is why... It's important for battle rappers to have additional sources of income. Talk about to it. To take care of yourself. And that's why when you try to job shame motherfuckers, <laughs> but you're chasing a bag and doing all these battles which water down your brand and then you wind up playing yourself out, mm-hmm. you re- it's really counterintuitive because someone like Jazz, like, I ain't going to count your pockets, but I know that anytime you step out, they taking yeah. care of you. Well, she yeah. said, URL paid me enough to quit my job. For real. There That's a is. blessing. That's there a blessing. Is. I mean, I fake when I get a job again, though. I'll be bored. What did you send in that two-week notice? Honestly, rich now? I gave them, like, <laughs> I asked, I said, do I got to give a two-week notice? They was like, no. All you got to do is just let them know you're leaving. You're just giving your um, headset and, like, the little training book and stuff. So I kind of gave them, like, two dates. It's funny to me that they even, like, that, like, I get why it's an angle because I understand the sport of battle mm-hmm. rap, but like you've never, you're a very outside the box battle rapper. Mm-hmm. You don't use a lot of the same content. I mean, you'll talk some street shit here and there, you, but it's like, I don't want to say it's tongue in cheek because it sounds good when you do it, but you don't rely on that type of content. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you pride yourself on being like a civilian at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, like it's, I've always said this like, even before I was a battle rapper, like just regular rapping, people ask me for advice. I always say, be yourself. Be yourself, bro. Like, people are going to like you. If you are a good person, people are going to mm-hmm. like you when you be yourself. You're going to, you're trying to be somebody you're not. People going to realize it. Or you're just getting fake love because mm-hmm. now you're getting love for who they think you are. Be yourself. Like, I've always prided myself on that. Um, and like, after, like, for a while, I wasn't doing gum bars. Like, I didn't start doing gum bars until. Um, I battled official 2015. I was like, man, I'm, I'm on a gnome. I'm on URL. I know what they want to hear. I'm a fan. I know what mm-hmm. I want to hear. And, you know, since then, oh, I've been wild. You yeah. called the gun a carpet muncher. I did. You did. I did. <laughs> Yo, battle rap is a crazy. Like, why would I, I do shoot that? Him hard. <laughs> I kind, of, I kind of fucks with that. Yeah, our minds are just different, but um, this gun will eat your box. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it's just I I never had like the the gangster rapper image. Like obviously, mm-hmm. I'm just rapping it for what y'all want to hear. Like I just hate when people be like, "Oh, I'll never watch female battle rap." Soon as they rap a gun bar, no, 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 I don't believe them. Oh, but you believe that these niggas is yeah. doing what they talk right, about. Right. You're dumb. Yeah, you're dumb. You're dumb. They're getting paid mad money. You think they really doing all this for the most part? No. Yeah. Battle rap is their way of not doing it, or they still never did it regardless. It's entertainment. We make it sound good. It sound good. It's entertainment, bro. It's entertainment. Like, and after the battles, we're hugging each other. That's yeah. how you know it's, it's not real. It's not real life. It's entertainment. Now, that was the most shocking thing to me. Um, like Vixen used to confuse me when she had kissed somebody at the end of the battle because I, for whatever reason, I just assumed that people is really beefing. Mm-hmm. And y'all all friends. Yeah, I mean, for the most part. And we're not mm-hmm. friends with Cordial because at the end of the day, we all we all want to see everybody win. We all yeah. in the same industry. 
and it's not like it's not like a music industry or or a interview industry where like some people might step on people's toes or yeah. some people might be like nah I don't don't battle this person or don't book this person mm-hmm. like because there's so many leagues even even if somebody could get booked on another league like mm-hmm. it's not that serious of course battle rap has politics mm-hmm. but between battle rappers very rarely do those friendships or the relationships that you have with people make you want to like avoid saying certain stuff to them in a battle um yeah like a perfect example me battling Geechee um me and Geechee Geechee are really cool like Mm -hmm. really really cool and it kind of hurt a little bit to say some of those things Mm -hmm. even though they wasn't crazy it was just like oh like it just felt weird because (laughs) At the end of the day, it's like a good joke. There's always some truth in a joke. Yeah. Right? So it's like, you my dog. I don't want to say this about you, but if I'm saying it, that means I must really think it or it's facts. Mm-hmm. Or even if it's like I'm taking you start a, talking about his teeth. Yeah, like like that. I was like, damn, <laughs> like I like I wouldn't really do that. Yeah. You know, somebody. he's not gonna hold back though. So it's like yes. Yeah, that and that was the thing too. I'm like, man, he gonna try to wow on me. Like I I can't, you know what I'm saying? But to me, that was probably the meanest thing I said to him. Yeah. To me. To me. I definitely thought that he was gonna go in on you. And it, it seemed like he really what well, how close was that to the Mike P battle? Um, well, Mike P was January. That was like April. Mm. It was a few uh-huh. months after. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. When they got announced, everybody was like, oh, Jazz, you see what he did to Mike? Well, I he, thought he, he was going to do that. And, I, then, and then he had clean kitchen clean like oh, two weeks like, later. Yeah. Yeah. No, he battled clean a week before me. Right before. Or two weeks yeah, before yeah. me, yeah. Um, but yeah, like people was like, oh, why would you take him? You see what he did to Mike P. And respectfully, I'm like, I'm not Mike P. Yeah, right. I don't have that type of angle on me that's disrespectful. Yeah. It's just certain things that just don't work with certain people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if, like, let's say I was somebody that, like you said, it took a while for something to come out about me. Mm-hmm. If I had that type of image or those angles, he probably could have violated mm-hmm. me for real, for real. But I don't have that that yeah. thing. And I'm not a man, so it's not like he could test my gangster. You yeah. know, it was just very yeah. tricky with that. And mm-hmm. and at the bottom line, we're cool. I'm glad you even mentioned Geechee. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, baby. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned um, Geechee because at the, what was it, the Drake card, when you said, fuck Geechee, God, oh, on stage, my I God. literally thought y'all was beefing. Yo, a <laughs> lot of people did. Like I thought that shit was even my real. father. My father, he didn't know who Geechee was, right? It's like, you got static with the Crips? Yo, like, and he was like, I think the next time I went out there to LA, came out here, he was like, Make sure, like, like it was just on some, like, you you and Geechee, like, that's not real, right? I said, no, I'm actually going to be with him when I go out there. Yeah. He was like, you sure? I'm like, yes, that's my friend. Like, so I know a lot of people thought yeah. it was real, but that's the whole point. No, I asked him, Geechee, my friend. I asked him, I was like, what's up with your ass? Gina. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it it did. And then even, like, even being there, like, the Crips was behind me. And when I said that, they left. Uh, what? Wow. If you watched the battle again? Why? You gonna see a bunch of people behind I, but me. But the thing is, I is that it, they leave. He, he was headlining mm-hmm. that card. Yeah. You're in his city. I don't care. With the hood, and then you say, fuck Geechee Gotti. Fuck is you talking about? Fuck Geechee. I'm in the crowd. Yeah. I'm like, OMG. <laughs> she must got some niggas in here. And you know what it is, too? <laughs> like, me, the way I am, like I said, a lot of stuff don't bother me. But if yeah. I notice somebody just repeatedly doing shit to me, Mm-hmm. I'm going to remember it. I'm going to mentally note it. And when it's time for me to say something about it, I'm going to say it. That was that time. That was the most most perfect environment to say it That in. was the time. Like, I was like, she's a motherfucker. I'm just happy. Gangster. I'm just she's, happy I said she's it. She's a jazz. The rapper is a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy I did it in the third round, though. Because yeah. if I said in the first and second, it might have changed a little bit how the room went. But, um, but yeah, like, even we went to the, um, to the, party after the battle and he introduced me to one of his mans and he was like yo jazz when you said fuck Gucci, yo this nigga came out like yo hey who that who that bitch on stage with the white on talking about fucking <laughs> shit <laughs> and you like nah that's the sis we good like he was like oh nah because she was fine but then she started like he was like no it's it's just battle rap did it's you already want to battle him at that point is that like was that, that your was, way of calling him out yes that's what that was it was already brewing mm-hmm. um you know Again, he'd said my name in millions of battles. Mm-hmm. Leave me alone, son. Yeah. And yeah, like it, it just, it just started. You know, I knew that that would start the talks. Mm-hmm. Like all I had to do was really say something back, and now it's like, 
oh, Jazz and Geechee, and then, you know, it happened. Well, it's, it just shows that you have a really high battle rap IQ, like the way you strategize that. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to say this until the third round because yeah. it could alienate a bunch of the crowd. You're already anticipating Well, actually, like, no, I didn't, I didn't think that. Oh, I you didn't, didn't? I didn't even think that. Like, so I said I'm happy I did it in the third because, you know, they people behind me, they left. Um, I think... Oh, and I think they booed me too. The crowd booed me a little bit. My, the, I yeah. think they kind of laughed murmurs. a little. It was a little but it was, of booze. It was a little like, huh? Yeah. yeah. But it was like, I probably was like, I was doing so damn good. They was like, all right, fuck it. We'll listen but to But that's this. what you're yeah. supposed to do. <laughs> like, yeah. You were so much, like, no disrespect to her, Gaddis, she's a legend, but you were so much better than Gaddis that it was like, you could have said, fuck LA. Like, and nah, niggas was crying. fucking with you, like... I, you. I get what you're saying, I get what you're saying. I think, you had yeah. already dominated yeah, that it was, battle, it was, you know? Yeah, it was so, yeah, it was just... And it was the second battle, too, so, you know, yeah. real sick past day, rest in peace past day, and then it was like, all right, we got the girls on, okay, mm -hmm. this jazz comeback, woo, woo. Like, I think nobody really expected that battle to go like that, like, no. the way that it went. That it, was like, what the fuck? Ironically, though, because she has some fire bars, but it just didn't, like stand a chance yeah after what you said yeah it's hard when it's hard when somebody goes first and they're yeah. just really good because yeah. now you gotta top that yeah. and if you don't top it now second round you playing catch up you were one of the battlers that night too who didn't oversaturate everybody with drake bars i don't even think i had a drake bar yeah Probably, probably everybody three. had a Drake bar that night. Like, yeah. Again, that's high. every no. Everybody had a Squid Game bar. I had one. Yeah. <laughs> I had one. And that's the, like it's lucky that you're earlier in the card when something like that happens because mm -hmm. if like if it's the seventh or eighth oh, yeah. Squid Game I, I bar, I pay like, attention to that too. Mm -hmm. If I know that I'm going early on in a in a in a card, I'll keep certain like current event card. Well, I'm back. Bars. But if I know I'm going late, I'll probably skip out on them. Mm -hmm. Like I'll be sitting there, like, all right, who's gonna who's gonna have a Squid Game bar? I could see this person have one. I could I could definitely see this person have one. Like I I just pay attention to things like that because it's important. It's about how you flip it too, though, because everybody could have Squid Game bars, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's true. If it don't that hit, you know, it don't you want to have that one. That's yeah, true. you want to be like, that yeah. One. I think I, I had an Alec Baldwin bar, like mm -hmm. with the lady on the set, and I didn't think anybody would say it. Just because that's an out of the box kind of current event ball, but I was happy that I was going early in the night that mm -hmm. I knew I could get it off just in case. When stuff is going on in the media, do you like kind of like jot it down to no. say it later on if a bar's come, if mm -mm. a battle's coming? Up? I don't. I'll if I have a because I don't battle a lot, mm -hmm. so it's not like I'm gonna always have this to go to. Because mm -hmm. I, if I jot it down, and that something happened in January and I don't battle till April. Yeah, I'm not using it no more. Um, but what I will do, like if if I'm ha if I have a battle coming up. Write my bars and now like if something happens while I'm preparing, it's definitely gonna get jotted down mm -hmm. for sure. But you know, current event bars are really tricky. Yeah, cause they could come off cheesy. How yeah, did, it could. How did the Bardashians come about? Um, so the Bardashians came about when me and Official did out two and two first forty and E Heart. Mm -hmm. That's literally how it came about. It wasn't planned. How did the name come about? Official thought of it. That's hard. And um, that was not our name at first. What was it? Terrible. <laughs> And then we was like, yeah, this ain't it. Like, so let's say she can't. I didn't come up with any names. Like, I was, I was, I sucked at coming up with names yeah. for us. We had like five, and we chose one. We didn't like it. And then I was just like, you know what? The Bardashians might be the one, bro. That's it's, the best one out of the ones you thought of. But we wasn't like crazy about it. But yeah. I was like, that's the best one. It's and when cute. did when did you realize that Casey was? So Casey, um, so I so the way me and official we did Bardashians, cool. Everybody loved us. Mm -hmm. Boom. Casey ha Casey joined, um, what, about four or five months later. Now, me and Official are already cool with Casey, though. Mm -hmm. So, but that's one of them things, if you know, you know. Like, same with me and Official. People didn't even know me and Official were really cool. So when we teamed up, they was like, what the hell? But we like, they don't even know what's about to happen. So Casey, um, she had a battle um, in Virginia and she was just around us. Like, everything we was doing, she was around. And it was like the morning of the battle. I'm like, yo, official, what'd you think about adding Casey to the Bardashians? And I was like, she could be like Kylie Jenner. Kylie you know? Penner. Mm -hmm. Right, that's how that came up. Yeah. But I was like, she could be like Kylie Jenner. And she was like, sure. Like, she was, it wasn't even really a, a thought. She was like, yeah, like, yeah. we are cool. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the difference between the Bardashians and every other battle rap group is that we are actually 
friends. Y'all yeah. really fuck with each other. We're actually friends. It's to, other battle rap groups. Big difference. They're just recruiting people that they mm. think are good or that will make their group better. It's funny because the name can be taken in any way. Because like like in Cali, people replace the bloods replace the mm. the cut mm. with B. So my initial thought when I heard Bardashes, I'm like, oh, they they bloods. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then when and I she's thought about it, like, oh, oh, she's just in Geechee. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, well, I get it. It's Bardashians, but that's even hard and creative. That y'all name is a bar. That's, yeah. that's hard. Now, the Kardashians do have more than three sisters. Oh, yeah. Any thought to expand the Bardashians with more battle rap <sighs> um, females? But let's be real. No one wants to be Chloe, right? And like, shouts to Chloe. What you mean? Officials Chloe. I thought she was Courtney. Nope. Oh, she Chloe? Who are you? Damn. Okay. There could be, there could for sure be, a, there could for sure be Courtney then. Listen, like I said, we all friends. And, um, you know, me personally, like I, I, me and official really official's more strict on on adding people. Mm -hmm. She's like the strictest one about that. But you know, it kind of makes sense. Like people in battle rap are just not normal. I don't want to mm -hmm. say weird, but people in battle rap are not normal. Mm -hmm. It got to be people you trust because this mm -hmm. is your group. You know what I'm saying? You don't want information getting out. You you just want people you trust. And as of now, like, I just feel like everybody I'm friends with is in the position that they need to be. If you can add Rob Kardashian, who would it be? <laughs> um, If it was a Rob, it would probably be Lou Castro. It's got to be Lou Jastro, yeah, that's right? my guy. Yeah. That's my birthday twin. But, um, but yeah, he's definitely another one of my friends. He's that's crazy. Really, yeah, he's... Yeah, I love Lou. It's a... Uh, no, nah, but honestly... Official Jess, you're prettier than Chloe. Let's keep it a stack. Out <laughs> hey here. man, who, who did shit. you have an official in Casey Battle? Um, so I remember when it happened. I was in London, and I tried to. I missed my flight going back. I'm terrible with flights, y'all. Like I'm really bad. Are you? I'm bad. Damn. I've you missed... seem like so responsible. Oh no. Why do I seem responsible? Damn. You seem Damn. very responsible. You do. I'm the opposite of responsible. <laughs> I'm very irresponsible. Because I'm even admiring how you haven't cracked open one of them cans. Listen. <laughs> it's been calling that's my name. That's responsible. That's responsible. It's been very calling responsible. my name. That's, that's discipline. Okay. I'm not responsible, though. Like, I've probably missed... I've probably taken about... How many flights? I've probably taken about 400 flights in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. I've probably missed about 60. Oh, you a menace. It's bad. It's really, really, really bad. Damn. I almost missed my flight coming here. I made Look it by eight you. minutes. I thought you moved out here. I did, but I had to fly out. <laughs> <laughs> almost didn't move out here. Imagine me missing Welcome my flight LA. for the move. <laughs> I, yeah. said this, I said, Jazz, please change your life. <laughs> please. For the sake of growing up, <laughs> change your life. But yeah, um, but yeah, what were we talking about? about? Who did you have in Official Oh, Official Casey. So boom, it took me a little while to watch that battle because I was like, I had bad jet lag. I think I had caught like the flu or something. So I'm hearing about it. Finally watched it. I'm like, first of all, shout out to my bitch Casey for rapping with a boot. Yeah. A whole boot. I think that... Um, I don't remember like round for round. I remember watching it and I had it like 1-1. One, one. And then one of the rounds, it was like I couldn't choose. But it was just like that battle actually made me appreciate Casey's style more. Mm -hmm. So official, She's fire. official has a style that's easily digestible. It's very battle rapper, mm -hmm. you know, prototype. Casey's more of a pen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when I saw the polls with official winning, like, clearly, I'm like, y'all wilding. I didn't agree with the polls. I'm like, y'all wilding, like... Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I'm thinking it was about to be a clean win. And I'm watching, I'm like, nah, bruh. Nah, bruh. That battle's very close. Like, I don't, I still don't, I don't remember what round it was. But I was like, all right, she got this one, she got this one. Then that other one, I don't know. I think, though, just official sells her bars so well. Yeah. She's such a seasoned performer. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's yeah. going to sway a lot of people that aren't paying attention to the mm -hmm. nuances of the yeah. pen. Casey, like, really leans into that associative wordplay. So people that, she's a rapper's rapper in a yep. lot of ways. So Casey you, is, yeah, and that's why when I came up with Kylie Penner, it was, like, so perfect because mm -hmm. she really is a pen and that's what I love about the Bardashians too like all three of us have different totally different styles totally 
What's that? Uh, That's Texas, New Orleans, uh, and and Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, like, like, yeah, even with that. But just the way we write, the way we think. Like, Casey, pen, official. She going to bark, punch, bang, bang. Me, I'm about to snipe you. Where's she at? (laughs) Hold on. So, so this is what's going to happen. Casey going to be the real, the real, like, I'm on you, but it's official. She going to have a bomb. She going to throw all them bitches at you. Me, I'm going to be on top of the roof. Watching everything. When Angles. It's time, when it's time for me to, you know what I'm saying? I'm... When it's time to. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, I, that's what I really just love about the Bardashians too. Like we all just have different personalities. We have different styles. So we bring something different. It's not like we all mm. rap alike. Like, you know, people like to say, oh, jazz sounds like official now. I don't give a fuck. She's one of the greatest. But, you know, it just comes from learning from who you're around. Mm-hmm. That's just what it is. Like, I'm, we're all learning from each other, but you can always say we still all have our own styles. Y'all are a problem. Like, I think that... That's a tough squad. <laughs> as, yeah, it's like when, when you talk about you guys packaged together as a mm-hmm. unit, like, I'm scared. Like, y'all are a problem. Thank you. And, it's, and I, we noticed, too, like, it's always two of us outside. And the other one is chilling. Mm-hmm. So when official and Casey was outside, I was inside. And then when I was outside with Casey, official was inside. You feel me? And so now we about to see. I don't know what's going to happen this year, but like we did Kings vs. Queens together. Mm-hmm. But then official, official, actually official and Casey kind of fell back like after the um, bottom half of the year. But then official, came, Casey came back and, and did Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Right. Did him, did him. Oh, Damn, felt, didn't I, expect that. And I, yeah, I think a lot of people, so. a lot of people were caught off guard by that. Yeah, and I think he was too. Yeah, was, yeah, you could. Li- it literally looked like he was like spooked a little bit. Like, like he, like it was just weird because Arsenal, you could freestyle, right? Yeah. So for you to become befuddled like that was like, yo, was we've never really seen our break character. Well, he no pulled his what. phone out. Yeah, that's different. And I thought I thought that was like that's something I've never seen. I'm sure it happened before, but it's I've happened. never seen that, and I did not. Expect oh no, that it's, from it's definitely it's, it's definitely happened. happened. It's not a foreign thing, but for somebody that but knows Arsenal, how to freestyle, yeah, I think with him, he's just you know hasn't really been that entrenched in battling for a while now. He's mm-hmm. been super focused on mm-hmm. his music, has a whole lucrative career. Um, Speaking of New Jersey rappers with lucrative careers in and outside of battle rap, you have always been real close with Surf. Um, mm-hmm. Shouts to Sue Surf, you know, great guy, love Surf. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the most important battle rappers in history and my favorite artist of all battle rappers as far as yep. mm-hmm. making music. Like, I really, I actually slap his music, which I can't say about too many people in right. battle rap. He um, was in my top um, for, you know, Apple tells you your top for yeah, the year. The, yeah. He top. was in my top, yeah. And, um, top three. And I, I remember when he did his bid last time, you were like the, uh, the real source of information and we're talking to him mm-hmm. a lot. And um, yeah. now he's going through this unfortunate situation. I hope he comes home soon. Mm-hmm. Like, have you been in touch with him or what's been going on? Yeah, we've been in touch, not as much as... Um, not as much as it was like the years ago, um, but you know, like my lifestyle's a little different, so it's hard for me to speak to him. Like I'm talking about, we used to speak every single day. Right, literally. that's what I remember. On the same app though, because he still got the same app. But um, yeah, but now it's just a little more so, just checking in, you know, giving you an update. You know what I'm saying? But obviously the love is the same. Um, I did go to see him last month. I was like, I gotta see him before I move. You know what I mean? Because I didn't see him at all from when he got locked. So I was like, all right, I need to make it my duty to see this man before I move all the way across the country. And went to see him. And yeah, it was just all vibes. Like it was, it was like it, it was like seeing him outside. It just was between the glass. High energy, him. high spirits. Yeah, like yeah, very high spirits. Very same surf that you'll see any other day. Like we making jokes and shit mm-hmm. like that. He talking his shit. And yeah, it was a it was a really good visit. Um, so yeah, he definitely in, is in high spirits. He's not down to anything. Like it's a surf, but that's how that's how I think that's how you should be. Like because if you just in there just down, like you not hurting nobody but you for real. Yeah, you know what I mean. You need you need people to keep your your energy up and things like that, especially people that you are really close with. So it was definitely good to see him. Do you like um? How do you feel like his absence is affecting just battle rap culture right now? Um, I mean, you know, we all know Surf is a terrorist. So he's a different type of terrorist, though. He is an arrogant terrorist that 
it kind of is infectious because then it affects other battle rappers to be terrorists on other battle rappers. Like, so now, you know, you'll have your things in battle rap that's going on, but it's nothing like a surf rant. I feel like Verb has kind of stepped into that role in his yeah. absence. But it's like Verb, that's always been Verb too, True. though. True, true. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's always been him, but now it's just him. Right. There's nobody else that really does that but Verb and Surf. And honestly, Surf and Verb got into it, and we've been waiting for their battles. So oh, yeah. now Verb can't talk shit to Surf. But um, but yeah, it's 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 um like I said, battle rap always has something going on every day. Yeah. Like it's it's not boring. If you want Twitter, battle rap's living room, that's what I always call it. <laughs> that is battle rap's living room. Spaces now. Even well, I don't do too much in the spaces. But it's on Twitter, so it's like, yeah. fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, the spaces is like the, the the circle in the living room. Like, you could go in there if you want. They might be playing dice in there, you feel me? But you <laughs> you go, it's going to get crazy in there. So if you want to just stay in the living room watching mm-hmm. TV, you good. But um, his, but yeah. his rants is something that kept what I feel like everything kind of entertaining in between the battles. <laughs> spaces I mean, have I, been dead as far as I'm concerned. Spaces have been dead since, since Surf went yeah. away. I feel like. Surf used to, listen, let me tell you something. Surf used to be in those spaces 24-7. Yeah. I used to be like, nah, son, now you're old <laughs> You're old It It's been like seven days. Your voice is gone. <laughs> Take a nap. And then he'll tell you in the spaces that he's prepping for a battle. <laughs> right. Your surf was good. Shit, prepping for this battle. <laughs> you go, you go to sleep to him on spaces and wake up and he's still on like, spaces. Like that is sick. But it'd but, be entertaining. But though. I get it though, like. I catch myself in Twitter spaces and end up being there for two, three hours. Like, why the hell? Like, we not really talking about nothing, but we are, and I don't want to miss nothing. So that's yeah. actually why I don't go in. Because once you go in and you don't got nothing to do that day. It's a vortex. Oh, don't let you not have nothing to do. Yeah. It's clear. Now, if you got something to do, all right, you're going to get out of there. You don't got nothing to do? You staying in there. Yeah. So what do you think? Do you think we'll ever see... A female champion of the year in battle rap and do you feel like you have had a year like i mean last year you you had a few really really strong performances mm-hmm. you had a you had two two on twos and the geechee battle right and i mean and I get, vixen and vixen, vixen. and shy yeah. so i mean like do you feel like you're in contention i mean to me i feel like you kind of are in that conversation and if it's not you you're for sure top three or four um I, I know they do a top 20, so I I, I, conf- I can confidently say I'm in the top 20. Top 20? Shit. I can confidently say top 20. I can confidently say top five. Hey, man. I can confidently say top three. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, But I, uh, I mean, I know as- they talking about Swamp. They talking about Suge, you know? It's a few people. Yeah. Like, the top five that I be hearing, I feel like... I understand why people have them as top five. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, like, for you to say I'm top five, you say I'm top three, like, obviously y'all have y'all opinion. That's what y'all think. But I can understand why... I want y'all to win. I want be. you to win champion of the year. I mean, look, I personally feel like it wouldn't happen um, for two reasons. Just because we have the Wodi, the women of the year. So, if I was to win both, you know, that would be kind of, like, going crazy. Because I do feel like I'm going to win Wodi. But the thing is, too, it would be very, like, weird if, like, let's say I made the champion list, like, top 20, Mm -hmm. but I didn't win Wodi. Like, would that make sense? No. If you have a woman on the top overall, but she doesn't win the top. No, you have to win both. Right. But as far as a woman winning uh, the champion, I do think it's possible. Um, I don't think I'm going to win it this year. I do think it's possible um, but you have to be a certain caliber of woman. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't be uh, a low tier or mid tier because who you battle is very important. Mm-hmm. If you have people like Tay Rock, Nitty, Geechee, Suge, and they're battling these high contenders, as a woman, you have to do the very same. That's just what it is. So it would have to be somebody that can get these opponents. So somebody like me, like, let's say I battle Geechee, Vixen, um, let's say I was to battle, I don't know, let's say I was to battle Coffee last year, and um, who else was lit? I don't know, let's name another guy. You battle Coffee A Mook. Year? No, I didn't, no, I'm saying, let's say I was to. Mm-hmm. Like, so Geechee, Vixen, Coffee, and Mook, mm-hmm. right? If I was to battle them and, you know, 
didn't die in any of them or lose any of them, then I feel like I have a strong chance in being Cody. But that's because I'm battling the top women and the top men. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think it has to be very, that resume from the woman has to be very prestige. Well, it's like, you definitely had a career year. Because if you think about it, I think you've had 16 battles, right? Um, Yeah, I I believe my last one was 16. Right. And so damn near 33% of all your battles were last year. (laughs) That's kind of crazy, right? That's hilarious. Yeah, I did I did five battles last year, so I did half my career in one year. Damn near. Yeah. Who do you think is the top five of 2022? Um, I mean, see, all right. Suge is in there. Swamp is in there. Uh, Nitty's in there. Bill Collect is in there. Um, all great choices. Mm-hmm. I'll just say me. I'll say me. I can, like, I can see me being top five, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, because there's a whole panel or whatever, they might not agree. I know I'm definitely 20, though, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was on a panel, I could make an argument of me being top five and it being valid. You know, I'm not saying I'll make it or not, but I'll say, I'll say our, our, us five, our years were, like, stood out a lot. Did I say Swamp? You said yeah. Swamp, okay. yeah. I feel like our years stood out a lot, like a lot, a lot. And especially because I want to say the top three that stood out for real was Suge, Swamp, and me. Because I'm going to start with me. Me because I popped outside way more than normal, but also who I popped out with and the the quality of the performances were very impactful. Like everything I did, it was something. It was important. And it right before something. then, it was Gaddis. Just literally right. two months mm-hmm. before the year right. started. If, like, if that was 2022, I feel like I would have, like, that would have just been it. Yeah. But, you know, that was 2021, so it is what it is. But the Gaddis battle kind of just started the mm-hmm. the whole thing. Um, it was a warm-up for yeah, the next for, year. Yeah, right. So then um, Swamp. Swamp did the tournament. He was damn near the underdog. He battled Tay Rock, some of the madness. Mm-hmm. To me, that was a debatable battle. You feel me? That's enough. You're a newer guy. You're going against Tay Rock, one of the greatest. Great year for um for Swamp, Pete Nitty in the mm-hmm. in a tournament. Like you went to the finals in the tournament. That I feel like people that like do tournaments, like I commend them so much because that's really hard. I've never done one, but I can only imagine the tough task of having to write for a battle for for two weeks, and it's because you want to win some money. Same thing with Bill, then, right? Right. Yeah. Bill too. Um. But so then, I, who else? Shug. Shug. We all know Shug has his ups and downs. This was a great year for him because it was just up, up, up. He's catching clear wins, all of that. So it's just like everybody has their, the people that I named, we all have our, why our year was so big because it's all different things, right? My year was big for me, but not for the same reason Shug year was big for him mm-hmm. at all. Two totally different years, totally different stages, totally different everything. But we still had pivotal years in our career this year. For you, it was like the dot on the exclamation mark. For Suge, it was like her whole redemption arc. So it is different. But I feel like nothing that happened in Battle Rap last year was as impactful in actually a really negative way um, as the loss of Pat's day, oh, you yeah. know? Yeah. Pat Pat being somebody that touched every... We've had a lot of people that have passed in Battle Rap, but nobody that really affected every scene you know mm-hmm. what i mean like he, w- he was beloved in king of the dot he's beloved in url rbe like no matter what part of battle rap you're in mm-hmm. that loss really really resonate how did how, how did how were you affected by that what was it like when you first heard about it um again i seem to always wake up to bad shit mm-hmm. so i woke up i think i woke up a little earlier than normal though it was maybe like seven in the morning and I saw one tweet. All it takes is one tweet. But it's like, it's like Pat Stay. It's like, I don't see nobody lying about that. This can't come out of nowhere. Went to the page. I'm like, okay. Refresh. So about two more tweets. I said, oh my God, this can't be real. So then I tweeted something like, Pat Stay died with a question mark. And I guess when I tweeted it, that's when it started like, you know, trickling down people's timelines and more people finding out from other sources and the the bloggers posting it. And it was just like immediate tears because it was just like, 
it's just so random, like past day. And like you said, his his energy was so infectious. Like good vibes, great vibes. You know what I mean? He will always bother me on Twitter. He will always troll me on Twitter. So it now was like a thing of, like you said, damn, this is a big one. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is a big one. Like this is somebody that is huge on any league he steps on, you know what I mean? And he was just a, such a lovable guy and a great energy. It's, like, it's usually the ones that have great energy that's like, it hurts the most because it's like, why you though? Like, why you? Then when you find out he was murdered, that adds on top of it. Like, damn. That always make it worse. God damn. Like, Not some senseless jealousy. Yeah, right like here. as the time went on, you find out the story, it's like, what? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I think in situations like that, uh, for me, it's best to just think of, you know, God calls for his people when when he feels like it's time. That's just how I think of situations like that. That's the only thing I could boil it down to. That's the only thing I could boil it down to. You know what I mean? His Just his energy is just kind of just sticks with people. And I think that's something that's going to last forever. God it's needed him up forever. there more than he needed him down here, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, that's just that's just the energy that lasts forever. And, you know, you start thinking about your, your last memories. And I'm like, damn, I just battle rapped on, with him on the Drake card. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just, and, and a, a sidebar, like, this is why when I go to events, I like taking pictures with people that I don't have much pictures with. Yep. Because their memories, I'm not saying, like, I'm going to just think about them when they pass, but their memories. They're always going to put you in that very moment when you asked for that picture, what type of vibes we was having, we're all, it's a dysfunctional family, but we all family. You know what I mean? Something happened to a person at an event, we gonna feel that. Because mm -hmm. we're at a battle rap event. We're here for battle rap. You know what I mean? So I loads of pictures in my phone with people. You name a battle rapper, I have a picture with them. I might not have posted it. They might have never seen this picture. Mm -hmm. But I got pictures with damn near any battle rapper you could think of because of just I'm big on memories and I'm big on yeah. just, you know, feeling that. You know what I mean? Speaking of taking pictures with people, um, you and Fab got a picture and Fab posted you and said, this is my new favorite battle rapper. Now, I know y'all both from the same area. Mm -hmm. Did you already know him or did you no. meet him that night? I met him that night. He didn't know who oh, I was either. Oh, my God. Yeah, he... It was just crazy how, like, that night was just so crazy. Like, if I could do that night over 10 million times, I would. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally. So, we battle rapping or whatever. He was in, like, the VIP section and stuff like that. And as I'm rapping, I said something, and Nunu whispered, Fab, Fab is here. here. And it took a minute to, to you know, because you're when you battle rapping, you in tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. So, in my head, I'm like, okay. Like, I didn't say anything that had to do with Fab, but okay, that's fire. You yeah. feel me? So, then... She said it again, and I was like, yo, it's crazy. I do have a fab bar. So I was like, it's going to hit All that picked harder. up in your mic. I know, man. <laughs> and, like, I hate that they don't turn your mic off. Yeah. Because what if I want to tell my friend a secret about something? I right. don't got nothing to do with nothing. Now y'all know my secret. <laughs> like, damn. When, when she said it the first time, I heard her. And yeah, that, right. that's my favorite rapper. So I got super excited, and I was oh. like, "I hope she got a fucking fab bar." And yeah, then he was it, like, "I got a fab yeah, bar." Yeah, it just after so that, happened. I'm just waiting like, for it, it just so happened. But um, but yeah. So after the battle, you know, I, I leave, do my interviews, and I'm like, "Who? I don't. I think somebody came up to me and said, "Fab is over there. If you want to meet him, I said, take me to him." <laughs> Take me to that man. 13-year-old Jazz is tripping, right? Yeah. No, this is what happened. My best friend showed me his tweet. Because mm -hmm. before I battled, I changed my password. Mm -hmm. So she had my, my Twitter. She said, look, I said. <gasps> and it just made it, it made it so much crazy because the, the year prior, he tweeted that Vixen was his favorite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you battling him. And I remember when I saw it, I was devastated. I said. How? She not even from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> but then my homie was like, Jazz, he might just not know you. Mm -hmm. Like, he might not be a battle rapper. He might just happen to be watching that battle. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't care, son. Like, but so when we met, he was just like, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know who you were. He's like, I knew Vixen because I watched her. And he was like, Mano was telling me, like, you you one of the, you're the best ones. And, you know, it just, it's just ha it was just dope that he got to see that performance. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm in New York. Okay, you get the vibes from Brooklyn. Then 
the show, like the performance I put on was amazing. So, mm-hmm. you know, for him, it's probably like, damn, how the fuck did I not know her? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was it was definitely dope. Then Papoose was there. Now, granted, I've met Papoose a few times, mm-hmm. right? He'd be at events with Rem. But I never got to tell him that he was always my favorite rapper. So I was able to tell him that, and then he was kind of, like, blown away by it. And I'm like, I don't know, are you blown away? Well, I'm blown away. You a fan of me, and I was a fan of you. And he's like, yeah, but I'm a fan of you, and you was a fan of me. So I'm like, yo, it's dope. And I was like, anything you hear me say in life and rap, you are a part of that. You helped me with the way that I write, whether it's music, battle rap, whatever it is. Because Pat was one of those rappers that he's very, like, he's very, um, I don't want to say philosophical, but... He's one of those, like, he he gets deep. He's deep, yeah, He's for very sure. deep. He's very lyrical, mm-hmm. right? And like you said on that song that I did about the the, the girls don't got to do what, like, that type of rap comes from my Papu Concepts. side. Concepts. Mm-hmm. Yes. Concepts. That type of rap comes from my, my Papu side. It really does. You know what I mean? Punchline, punchline, punchline. That's that comes fab. from yeah. That comes from Fab and Cassidy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then the Fab part, I've always felt like this. I've always felt like... My now is not so much, but before my delivery was very just laid back, very just y'all gonna get the point. I don't gotta do too much. That's the fab part. That's mm-hmm. like all three of those rappers really are a part of just who I've become. So for all of that to happen in the same night, crazy. That crazy. is, and then I guess you probably get the the sniping shit from M. You feel me, like yo? You know what? There it is. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and you know, we were talking earlier and you were saying that you're you don't really like battling. All right, it's time. Crack it open. Come on. My Let's, baby been calling me. Come on, come on. Calling me. Calling me. It's about that time. Thought juice activated. <laughs> Can you say the bar? And it's time to. And it's time to. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Hit the speezy. That first sip. All right, what happened now? No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Perfect timing. Um, you said that you're not really that. You don't enjoy battling men like that, and you you don't really feel like you have. You know, you you've been saying that you want this to be the the swan song. That you want this to be your final year as an active battle rapper. Oh hell no. I said that on the phone in confidentiality. Well, well. (laughs) I hope it was cat. No, so you know what it was? The word wasn't want. The word was I feel like. Mm -hmm. But it's because of the way that I battle and the way the people I've battled were the people to battle, right? So now I think that after Vixen, there's only one left that I think, and that's coffee. But that's it. I got some some people I need you to beat up though. But this is my thing, right? And this is how I how I how I used to do it and how I'm, I'm gonna keep doing it. Like I feel like just it's just an order of things that you have to do. Mm-hmm. Like not even to just sound like that, but this is a it's it, you gotta do certain things for me to feel like I right, you're you, I wanna battle you because I feel like you're a challenge. But I'm not battling somebody that I think I'm gonna walk through. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. Well, and your catalog is crazy as far as, like, the women you've battled. I mean, you know, 40 Bars, Official. Um, QB. QB. Shayna. Like, Hustle. Mm-hmm. Got it. Like, it's all the greats damn yeah, near. A a, lot. That's how I like to do it because, again, because I never battled a lot, so I knew that once I did it, I needed it to count for something. Mm-hmm. Because... Like you said, I'm very strategic. So I didn't want to battle somebody, and then they'll be like, yeah, but like, let's say I was to battle uh, Tori Doe. It would still be, yeah, but you didn't battle E Hart. Right. But if I battle E Hart, they're not going to say, but you still ain't battle Tori Doe. You feel me? It's like, well, I battled E Hart. Do I really need to battle somebody that's a little lower than them? Right. Do e. I Hart, really one of them ones. To? You know what I'm saying? Do mm-hmm. you feel like a lot of people are just looking for that misfit fade still? Yeah, of course. You know, I think grudge matches are always grudge matches. But you're smooth off that. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of like, like I said, I know it's always going to be on the table. It's always going to, no matter if we turn 50 years old, it's always going to be on that table. But me personally, you know, when it was in its prime of happening, I was excited, but now it's just like, yeah. And there's, 
you feel like after Geechee, there's not really anything to prove as far as battling male rappers? Um, this is my whole mindset of things. And this is why it took so long for me to battle a man. Because I always would say, if I'm one of the top female battle rappers, and I'm going to take the top female battle rappers, when I battle a man, I need it to be one of the top males. I'm not going to now compromise the ranking of whom I battle because it's a man. Mm -hmm. Respect the women like you respect the men. Y'all nice. have me on the same cards as these men, and I'm performing better than them, or I'm performing just as good as them. Why do I now have to, you know, go against what I like to do just because it's a man? Just because a man, you a man don't make you better. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to take a low or mid-tier man just because that's what you want to see. No, I'm going to take the top man because I'm a top woman. So with Geechee, it was perfect. Like, just because he was Cody, you know what I'm saying? And... He's just beloved in the culture. Like, so it was it was really perfect. It was perfect timing, I think. Um, as far as another man, there is another man that I would want to battle. I'm not gonna say the name. Because but I'm gonna say I would wanna battle him just because he's another top guy, but also it would kind of like, I feel like it would kind of change the game for mm -hmm. real. It would change the game. Um, but yeah, when I was preparing. You have to tell me off cam. Gotcha. <laughs> But when I was preparing for Geechee, it was like, it didn't feel the same as preparing for a, a girl. Have you called out coffee already or is this the first time you... Yeah, we've, yeah, we've... Cut, so we were supposed to battle last year. That wasn't supposed to be Vixen. That was supposed to be coffee. Really? But she got pregnant. Oh, congratulations, yeah, coffee. Yeah, she had a, a daughter. She had a daughter. Okay. Yeah, so she was pregnant all 2022. Mm -hmm. So I had to go with my next person. Battling pregnant is crazy. It's been done. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? It's been done. Farrah did it. Would you have bars for the for the unborn? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's a handicap match. What you mean? Y'all about to jump me? Imagine, imagine <laughs> someone's water breaking in the second round. Oh man, now that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Deliver the baby. I was working for 911. <laughs> I heard uh, murmurs of a uh, my verse battle. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. Ja Jasmine, Jasmine, not. <laughs> Jazz, Jazz ain't doing. She's been saying that. Ain't, oh, you know what yeah. I'm talking about? The well, yeah, there is. I mean, there is a. It was just on Spaces. Well, yeah. Oh. Ver Verse was looking for that for a while, and Jazz is like, "You ain't done enough." Yeah. It was so new that, like, it was recent. Yeah. That. Um. I mean, I don't know if I could say it on. That that dialogue's been going on for a while. Yeah, it's though. been going yeah. on for years. I mean, yeah. she just got set up with Miss Hustle. She just battled is a, Flames last month, so that's is, probably why thing, yeah. it's getting back into the conversation. But, girl, he was talking about it on there. You and know he was saying, saying it was recent. Could, yeah, and they was talking. Was somebody called him, or they was on the phone. It was like something where he like called in or something. Oh, but I'm. But that's why I thought it was. It nah, was I feel new. you. No, you know what it is? It probably is. Like a new, it probably got brought back up because she's about to battle hustle. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's gonna bring up well jazz. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right, right. oh, if you do, if you do good against hustle, you be hustle. We want to see you in jazz. I probably still wouldn't take it just because it's not how it works, bro. It's not how it works, my verse. You gotta you gotta do more. You know I mean? They was talking like you had set it up. I'm going to find a link and send it to you. They was talking like it was like, a oh, if Jazz called her out, that means that Jazz oh, yeah. being ready for her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I call somebody out, that yeah. means I want to, that means I'm I'm with it. That's why I thought it was happening. No, nah, I ain't call her out. I ain't call that lady out. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my verse. <laughs> I ain't call that lady out. Mm -mm. No, nah, you're very methodical, and I think that's one of the reasons that you've been able to sustain this aura that you have, this superstar aura. Um, mm -hmm. A couple of like just overall logistical questions about just because you're so tapped into all sides of battle rap. Do you feel like the fact that we've been in an era the past few years where the biggest league has their battles coming out on an app, do you think that the lack of a presence of, of, of battle rap on YouTube has negatively affected it? Um, I don't think it negatively, yeah, negatively affected battle rap, but I do think that it hurts the newer talent. Like, it, it's not... You're not getting them anywhere but on the app. So you're just getting the older fans hip to them when, before the app, we had the luxury of gaining new fans every single day. But on the app, it limits it a lot because now people got to buy it. Nobody's going to buy something that they don't know what they're buying. But YouTube, oh, I click it for free. Like, I got discovered by people just 
deciding to watch battle rap. Nobody was looking for female battle rap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just happened to come across it. Oh, shit. Now I'm on URL. Imagine if I would have debuted on URL, but on the app. Right. I mean, that's yeah. kind of like like Vixen, right? Like, you know what I mean? Or yeah. Even um, Easy the Black Captain, mm-hmm. Swamp, a lot of these dudes that have been having incredible runs. Mm-hmm. But you got to... It's gotta, very limited. Yeah, like, it's hard to even see the content. It's very limited. And it's like, it's kind of like... Yeah, like Vixen was a good example. Vixen been battle rapping. All those people been battle rapping. They get on URL, but now they're in the app era. So the older fans are... Learning about them. But you have her going against me, somebody that I have these YouTube fans. I have all these fans. I'm way more known than you only because you're limited to the app. But if you was drop, if they was dropping her on YouTube, all them great battles that she's had, Tay Rock, um, uh, DNA, Flames, I'm going to be honest, the outcome of that battle might have been different. Mm. Right? Because there might be more people in that room that I don't know. I don't really know her. But mm-hmm. I love jazz. Right. You know what I mean? But even so, it's on the contrary, though. When I battled official, nobody knew her, but that's because she wasn't on URL. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, shit, hold on. Mm-hmm. She's wilding. But with Vixen, like I, like I said, I think that if she was able to get that YouTube access, the crowd would have been a little different. Because it's been like, yeah, we still in New York, but Vixen liked that. Some of them might not be real familiar with her. They might mm-hmm. just be see clips of her on TikTok, clips of her on Instagram, but we don't really know how she is as a battle rapper. So I, I personally, if I was a new battle rapper, I would hate it. I'm happy I came in when I came in. Absolutely. I got a question for both you guys. I want to hear both y'all take on this. What do you feel like is the most important attribute for a battler to have that's going to be like something that def- I know my answer. definitively wins battles? Gina. I think it's everything we talked about earlier with Jazz, the pen, the um, the voice, the aggression, the scheme, the angle, like it's everything. Every so not to dig right, but everything that surf do. No, look, but look, but look, but she see, loves her some. No, but listen, right? You cheated because you named everything. You did cheat. But he um, basically what he's asking though, right? If you had take surf, for example, if you had one thing that surf does that is is why he's as big as he is. Mm-hmm. What is it? You can only choose one. AMG mode. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm gonna actually take away everything I just said. Okay. I think the most important thing is um, investigating the, the the opponent, studying your opponent. Yeah, because like we was talking about battle rap, uh, another battle the f- couple weeks ago, me and Lush. And one thing that I really enjoy, like, I don't like the, um, one thing I really enjoy is the personal shit. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, in my mind, if I'm battling jazz, I don't know nothing about you. How the fuck am I about to get people to fuck with what I'm saying? Yeah, I can have all the bars. I can say all this cool shit. But if I'm talking about your personal life, like, that's a different type of dedication to me. And it's just very, um, it's just strategic that you can research these people and the way, like, if I'm battling you and I'm going to go way back to that crazy ass job you had, you know, like, yeah. like, that's cool as fuck to me. When you're talking about people, fucking family members and all of that type mm-hmm. of shit, it's like, how the fuck did you know that I went through that 15 years ago? You mm-hmm. know, so I think that's the most important thing is the study in your opponent. That's a great attribute, actually. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Everybody don't, everybody can't do that. Yeah. No. And even doing it and then making it fun. Yeah. You know, it's like making it all creative and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, that like is... You're not just saying it. Yeah. You're now putting it into bars and making us laugh and you making it a thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I would say the most important attribute is this. And it's very cliche. But it's confidence. Mm. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. I've seen battle rappers that have not been that good. But their confidence gets them crazy reaction and it gets them to become a star. They mm-hmm. end up on big stages. That's what it's all about. Being a star. Now, that stardom might not last forever because for stardom to last forever, you need more. Now Now you need to get into to the, to, to being good and mm-hmm. all this and the third. But I really feel like confidence is a huge way that you can win battles. I think yeah. that's and a I great answer. That. I learned that over the past year. No, I, I feel that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a great answer and I feel like 
confidence is the most important attribute, not just for a battle rapper, but yeah, for a lot of things. For a, life. I mean, life, yeah, for life, but definitely rapping in general. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're like you listen to rappers earlier in their career. Like has a, I remember like here's just a random example. I remember French Montana, right? Like Montana, he gets on the track, Montana, you feel me? Yeah. Feeling himself. He used to, I remember listening to old French, like Coke wave stuff from way, mm -hmm. he'd be like French Montana, you yeah, feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and that confidence when it, it, it hit different. Now, my answer to that is, and it's something you do, that's why I brought it up. And this is something that's won battles going back since literally Roxanne Shantae era mm -hmm. to all the scribble jam freestyle battles to the, to Fight Club and Smack DVDs, to mm -hmm. Grind Time, to URL, to all eras, and that's capturing a moment, just creating a moment mm. that's bigger than the battle, that's mm -hmm. gonna, people are gonna remember, like. You're giving the sauce. If you are a battle rapper, an upcoming battle rapper, he's giving you the sauce. Message. I'm not giving you the sauce. <laughs> he's giving you the sauce. You are absolutely right. But what what's that necessity that creates the moment? It's just you gotta know. Cause I how feel to like a it. lot of niggas think they making moments, and it's like you gotta know how that to wasn't do it. the moment. That's you. It's crazy. You hit the nail on the head. The reason that you, the reason that you said I do it is cause I aim to do it. Mm -hmm. That's something I cannot leave a battle without. Like like the losing my virginity, like the pipe took me to the next level. Yeah. That was a moment that, and I don't know how anyone could have known that, but you knew that that you knew that was gonna pop, right? Like on a different man, the apple juice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the apple juice bar. A, a lot of times I feel it's like I not. I had another moment in that battle. Well, a lot of times it's not even just a bar. It's mm -hmm. something that you do. Most of the time, it is not a bar. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say about maybe like 75% of the time it's not a bar. Right. It could be how you, it could be um, how you delivered something. Mm -hmm. It could also be how, how the crowd reacts and how you yeah. now react. It could be so many things. It could be the way Smack reacts. Yeah. But moments in a battle are very important because let's say you eat like let's take let's take um T Top and Rum Nitty, mm -hmm. right? Self checkout. Yeah, that was moment. Huge. You might think Rum Nitty won the first two rounds, but that moment is what sticks from the battle. I'm gonna remember self checkout off rip. Mm -hmm. You ask yep. me what you remember from T Top and Rum Nitty? Self checkout. Right. That's a moment. And Top knew that was a moment. Or just mm -hmm. like I always say, clean, bitch, stop watching Smack. You yeah, feel me? Like That's a moment. It's a lot of battle rappers that understand what a moment is, mm -hmm. but there's way more that don't. Even if we go back to when the way that you delivered the, um, you bump pussies, I bump pussies, we different. That's a moment. The way that and you you hit her, but if I you want to just- way harder than I wanted to, though. If you I'm just sorry, stood back and said the shit, I, I bump pussies, you know, we, it like, cool. it wouldn't, it would have been like, oh, all right, I get it. You know, it probably like, would have went over people's heads, but company. you hit the bitch. Yeah. Half the company. Yeah. Moment. Man, shout out to my sis, Gaddis. I love you. Come on. <laughs> Half the company was a moment, too. Mm -hmm. And, but what made it an extra moment was when I hit the little Kim. Yeah. Yes. When they was like, Brooklyn. Yeah. And it was just crazy because we're paying for her. I was like, I, I need to write a bar that I'm going to do the little Kim dance. But mm -hmm. I could never think of it. Like, I was like, that's going to come up cheesy. Then that morning, I said, I need a reason to do this dance. Yeah. I'm sitting there, I need a reason to do the dance. And it happened. That's what I'm talking about. Things like that. Yeah. And even like with, um, when Mook hit the the pop smoke mm -hmm. and with the and Sirius Jones and then we're all right there mm -hmm. and like that is that's the kind of stuff yeah. that's gonna transcend. This was very subtle, but it was like shade. But when you when you said he to Gaddis, I, I did. You said he. You said he don't even something something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I said he but it, still rap like it's two thousand nine. <laughs> that's just what that that's just mean. Is but what that is. but she wasn't like it was like you didn't like. It wasn't like any, like, you wasn't thirsty when you said it. You know, like, you just said it real mm -hmm. subtle, and yeah. then everybody fucked with you it. You know yeah. what that is? That's some Brooklyn shit right there. If I <laughs> just disrespect. Di <laughs> not only disrespect, but like you said, subtle, slick. Yeah. St that's a stinger right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, most people ain't even going to catch it in the moment. Yeah. That's like them little Jay-Z bars. You mm -hmm. feel me? You know who did you know what, but you mm -hmm. know who. You feel me? Like Yeah, I like to do, I like to, yeah, I like to do a mix of things. Like, I just... I understand battle rap really well, and I under and I think it's because I'm I've been a fan since I was 13. A lot of female battle rappers didn't become fans until 
2012, 2013, if that, 2015, you 2016. Had, you had a tweet the other day that just like oh. made my, like you understand like why me of all people that like yeah. warmed my heart. Yeah, that's, that's made me you. feel so, yeah, that's, that's your me. baby. He exactly made me, feel, your baby. <laughs> made me feel so validated when she's like, if you don't know, and Lil you probably want to, yeah, if you don't know what Lil Farnham is, then you can't talk battle rap with me. And Lil Farnham is a very obscure, mm -hmm. shouts to Farnham, but it's a very obscure. It's a random person for me to mention about battle rap. Who but hasn't, like, who hasn't battle rap since 2009. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it's, so the, yeah. fa the fact like that, I never even knew, and I knew you're like a superhuman, like hip hop battle rap head and all that, but you had never really talked about grind time. I didn't even know, you know that why? was. why? I'm going to tell you why. Because so when I got, so grind time is how I got back into battle rap after Smack DVD. Like it was Smack DVD, 2005, 2006. And then I just, just stopped watching, but I there still wasn't shit knew. to watch really. Right. Okay, like, yeah. so I wasn't bugging. Yeah, but now you got to think about when YouTube came about, mm -hmm. right? And I remember hanging out with this guy, and he was like, "Yeah, you like punchlines? I have a battle rapper that you would like." So I'm like, "Who?" You know, he said, "Conceited." Mm. Of course, Conceited of is of course. also a heavy influence in my battle rap style. By the way, the one of the goats. Um, Conceited is definitely one of my favorites. Right, so I'm like, okay, so I watched him, and who was the guy in the um? It was outside. R.I.P. Tall T. Was it was yeah. Tall T? Yeah. RIP Tall T. It was Tall T. Fell back in love with battle rap. Started watching everything on Grind Time. Damn, so I'm a uh, so me hosting a battle is a part of jazz coming in the that's that warms my heart. Oh, like, yeah, he was also like, irritating her. Though. I mean, I don't think he irritated me at that time. He started irritating me when he started <laughs> on Twitter, getting, getting his money up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He started dressing more eccentric. That's yeah. around that time you got rich. When you told us about, <laughs> when you told us that this nigga was rich at a point in time. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, it's, a t it's the, the early stages yeah. of the, the glow but, up. Um, but yeah, so that's how I got back into battle. It was grind time. And then um, DNA and new remember, Smack took a lot of the battle raps from grind time and bought them to Smack. Oh, I remember. URL. So that's how I migrated to URL. Now it's crazy because I only knew DNA, Newborn, and Cortez, mm -hmm. right? They had an event. It was like dead in the middle of winter, hole in the wall club. You know who was on that card? Mm. And I didn't know them. I just knew DNA and Newborn. Who was mm. on that card? So the, the headline was Head Ice and Techno. Oh, the, I remember. Okay, I remember right? that event. But yep. it didn't happen because of, I think a snowstorm. Right. Mm -hmm. Big T versus Hollow. Mm -hmm. Sue Surfers, Young Ill. Wow. Calico versus Newborn. DNA versus Oom P. And it was one more battle. Was it either Math or Rex, I want to say? No, they weren't on that. They Because I knew them already from Smack DVD. Mm -hmm. I didn't know nobody but DNA and Newborn. I didn't know anybody. I swear to God, that bat, that event was $10, right? And I remember my homie Took, shout out to Took, Surfing Young Ill was on stage. And I was like, yo, who are these people? He was like, you don't know Sue Surfing, Young mm -hmm. Ill. I'm like, I've been watching Battle Rap. He was was, like, was Rich Dollars rich, maybe Rich? Rich wasn't on there. He okay. might have been there, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he wasn't on there. What you say? What year is this? This was 2010. Mm -hmm. This was February 2010. You're good with dates, Jesus. Yeah, because it was the winter. Okay. But I am good with dates. And um, so, yeah, he was like, you don't know Sue Surfing, Young Ill. This is going to be a good battle. So I'm like, all right, cool. Watched the battle. That shit was the best shit I ever seen in my life. And that was my first battle event I went to as well. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because, you, you, and it's crazy because you you came on the scene in 2011, mm -hmm. and then in 2012 is when we did the Disaster vs. Cannabis. Right. And I was talking to Norbs at the- so long ago. Yeah, right? I was talking to Norbs about booking you for that, and you were like the only, there's like, there's only a few girls that we feel like would be able to- translate and like mm -hmm. couldn't perform on That's a stage hard. that big and like it, i don't even know if you were aware of this or remember this but we were talking about doing you versus 40 bars actually and that's before y'all wound up it's, battling it might sound a little 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 familiar yeah a little bit but i i think you know 2012 was when i debuted on url right you wound up um <sighs> I think it was right before you debuted on Yes, URL. I was very strategic. It was so right around the time. I knew that. This is when I was in school still. I didn't like battling when I was in school. So I knew I was battling QB. I just didn't know when. I didn't take no battles that whole year from January to November. Yeah. So if I got a call, no. So if that happened, 
I said no. You did? Just because no. I knew I had this battle coming up. I'm not about to risk being, you know what I'm saying? I'm in school. Like, it just felt weird for me. I didn't like doing it. Mm -hmm. Had to give my all for the QB battle. Like, and me being on Smack changed my life. And I never thought it would. I, I didn't even, it's crazy. I never cared to be on Smack. Never cared to do it. It was just like a, all right. You know, but as I look back, it's like, Jazz, you was wildin', because everybody wanted to be on Smack. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess because I just kind of got hip to what was going on, it didn't really make, it wasn't a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. But it changed my life. I'm, I, I'm telling you, it changed my life. Like, people that I would have never thought would be watching me, DMing me, like, celebrities, just because I was on Smack. That's funny that you said everybody wants to be on Smack. I wanted to be Smack. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Smack is one of my idols. I, I yeah, guess. Smack is Smack, man. Smack, ugh, Smack deserves all the flowers he could get. He do, and he's changed so many people's lives. And bro. the crazy thing about Smack is, like, he didn't even want to be on camera at mm -hmm. first. Like, Smack, I heard he used to code the camera. He was. He Smack, was. Smack was That's the cameraman. Was not cameraman. People. That shit is so inspirational. Cause I'll, I'll do ciphers. I produce ciphers. So right. when I heard that, I'm like, this nigga. He was already goaded to me. But that just took it up to another level. He, people didn't know what he looked like. Nobody yeah. knew. Nobody yeah. knew his name was Smack. Yeah. It was called Smack, Smack DVD. DVDs. It was an acronym. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew his name was Smack. He's behind the camera filming these battles and filming these people rapping over the. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that's how I used to watch Cassidy. Like it's just crazy how the world works. You're watching your favorite rappers on Smack DVD, and now you battling for him. Mm -hmm. He wants you to battle. He has you on a Drake card. That's crazy. Sidebar. It was crazy that I battled for Drake and the next day I had to go to work. I was so <laughs> mad. Like, y'all know who I just battled for? Yeah, we saw you. We was watching. Like, that's, that's like crazy. But that's like a real B-Rabbit moment. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm going back to the steel mill. It is. It is. But, you know, like I said, like, now that I don't have the job, like, I kind of miss it. Like, I kind of miss that job. Like, it was a easy. It was a very, like, contrary to belief, working for 9 is very easy. You don't get these traumatic calls all the time. I was gonna say that seems like it would be taxing to get like a bunch of. It, it, it's it's I mean you get it sucks but you become numb to it. It's almost like being a doctor or a nurse. Yeah. You might see the worst injuries ever, but you're used to it, so it doesn't really affect you in a way. Or well, like if you have you have to work with kids, like if you um working on sick kids or something like that. For us, it'll be like damn, like this sucks, but. They're always working on on sick kids that, you know what I'm saying? So they're used to it. You know, it's, it's one of those things you can't take your job home. Have you ever um, gotten attached to a call where it, like, it kind of felt personal to you? Mm -mm. I never had like a call that I felt personal. Um, there was a way where you can kind of follow what's going on with that call. Mm -hmm. um, as far as just looking on the computer and seeing that the person is alive or not. Or if it's a car chase and seeing if they caught them. But besides that, you kind of don't really, like, a lot of time. I used to work overnight. For a long time, I was overnight, 11 to 7. So sometimes I would be leaving work and I would see a call I got on the news. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, oh, actually. Damn. You get that a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Um, but, yeah, it's one of those things where, like, if you get a crazy call that affected you, you could take your little personal break you can go right to the next call. Any kidnappings? Remember the, the movie The Call? They be lying sometimes. <laughs> Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Like, 30% of 911 calls, like, they be lying. Like, kids play too much. What? That's they lie crazy. to get the police there. But how do you up. identify if it's if it's real or fake? Um, well, obviously you don't really know. Like yeah. the, the the cardinal rule of working for 911 is Believe it. Take yeah, believe it. Take mm -hmm. everything for surface value. Mm -hmm. Even if they laughing. Because some people might react scared by laughing. You know what I mean? Like, you have to take a surface value. So that's one thing that I always did. Sometimes you know. You almost like Bruce Almighty. Remember when uh, he was playing oh, yeah. God and he was getting all them uh, prayers? Oh, my God. And then you just, <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. But, um, but yeah, like, it's, it's, it's a Jazz job. Almighty. It's a, that's fire. That's fire. It's um, Big Bag Almighty. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, it's one of them things where you have you definitely have to be a certain type of person to be able to handle that job mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, nine one one is customer service. Yeah, mm. if you're not good with customer service, do not get that job. It almost feels though like maybe you even have like negotiator skills. Not negotiator, but more of a calming somebody down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
calling somebody which is somebody the same attribute sure. negotiators yeah, gotta right. have right. and sometimes you kind of do like have to negotiate in a way mm-hmm. like they'll be on the phone like if y'all don't get here I'm gonna stab them yeah if y'all don't get yeah it's it's crazy like it's crazy it's 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 crazy but you get used to it like yeah. you really get used to it well, most of I'll, the calls are not crazy though and, at least when I was working overnight the calls used to the calls weren't spiking until it was from midnight to like two thirty. After two thirty, it dies down. Mm-hmm. You get like homeless people calling, crazy people calling. Um, you get a lot of disputes. Like I want this person out my house, and the person's they baby mother, baby father, mm-hmm. right? They drunk brother, right? A lot of those. Well, also you being a battle rapper and being able to like think quick on your feet and improvise, I'm mm-hmm. sure that helps in that instance as well. Yeah, I think naturally me, naturally again, because I'm so just chill, naturally it's easy for me to just be on the phone and talk, like calm somebody down because that's my natural tone. But there has been times where I'll get a call and probably like, I ain't gonna lie, like probably like my first three days, like, cause you get trained, then they have you sit with somebody and you sit with different people for a month. And then after that, you on your own. Like mm-hmm. they throwing you out there, Psh, taking the call. And I want to say like my first three days, I started in 2020. So this is when, 2020 was a weird year for the world. Yeah. This was when we had the riots, um, the George Floyd situation, the mm-hmm. protests. The this pandemic. Is when, oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the pandemic. Um, I don't know if it happened out here, but it probably did. Fireworks were going on for like two months straight. Like instead of 4th of July, it was just going on. Well, in the, I mean, I'm from the hood. So in the hood, 4th of July started in January anyway. Oh. Well. <laughs> just a lot of gunshots. But not normally. So normally, you know, the fireworks start July 4th, mm-hmm. and then like a week later. Mm-hmm. It didn't stop until August. Mm. Mm-hmm. What was going on? But it was across, at least I know it was across the East Coast because I saw people tweeting about it. Like, mm-hmm. yo, why is there fireworks going on for a whole month? Actually, it started on Juneteenth. Okay, it started yeah. on Juneteenth that and makes ended sense. in August. Y'all wilding. <laughs> Y'all wilding. But anyway, so it was a lot going on. So mm-hmm. my first week starting, it was the week of the looting. That's a Did crazy they time. Started start. during the looting? Yes. Started during the looting. I worked overnight. So you, that's when they're doing it. Wild call. Every call, like, so the way it works is after you take a call, you type in your information that you didn't get while on the call, and then you press ready when you're ready. But it was like anytime you press ready, you're getting beep. Mm-hmm. Beep. Like it's no waiting. So I got a call and um he like he had like a Spanish accent, so he was kind of hard to to understand. But I understood him. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "My brother just got shot." Um, I'm like, I panicked. This is like my third day. I'm not expecting to get somebody get shot on my third day, right? I'm like, where are you? A lot of times they scared. They can't say their address right. They don't know the intersection. So in my head, I'm like, you cannot panic because this person's calling you for help. Yeah. You were trained to do this. Like, I'm literally saying all this in my head while I'm talking to him. But I'm like, Jazz, you were trained for this. You know exactly how to respond. You have to be calm. Ask him his address. What's your address? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. All right, do, do you see a, a street corner? He gave me the intersection. Boom. He's like, can you hurry up? Can you hurry up? They shot my brother in the head. And they're coming after me. I'm like, oh. Like, like, what the hell do I do? So it's like, it sounded like he, he's like, I'm in the backyard. And as he's saying it, he's like whispering more and more and more. And then he hung up. So I don't know what happened with that call. I didn't see nothing on the news, but stuff like that is scary. And yeah. for you to get that, for you to get that on your third day is crazy. Like, I'll never forget it. But if I was, let's say I was to get that a year in, I probably wouldn't even remember that story mm-hmm. because I, now I'm used to somebody. You're desensitized. Getting, yes. And it sucks. But once you get them calls, the first call, the first crazy call is always crazy. But once you get another call like that, it's like, all right, this is routine. I know what to do. Mm-hmm. And and you're in a like a room with a bunch of other people all doing the same yeah. thing, right? Yeah, it's like, like a call. It's like a call center. Right. It's like a call center. So it's like 30, 40 people all doing it type shit. Like honestly, in New York, it's it's a lot. Yeah. What made you apply for that job? My sister, she was just like, yo, you can take this job. It's a good job. I'm like, I, I never knew regular people had that job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was like other people. I'll be thinking it's Angela Bassett. You know? 
non-compliant. <laughs> I thought it was other people. Like, I thought you had to be like specially qualified. Yeah. Anybody could get that job. This is just regular call center country. job. Yeah, it's a call center. What did, what were you doing before that? It's just like a glorified call center. Right. Um, so before that, um, I didn't work for like a year. And then um, for like a year and a half, I was at a call center. Mm-hmm. But it was for... Should I be saying this? It's up to you. You don't got to. They can't use it no more. You're right. Uh, <laughs> I don't care what y'all say to me. I will still beat y'all. Um, so it was like a it was a call center for transportation to your doctor's appointments. Okay. But it was for only people on Medicare and Medicaid. Mm-hmm. So I would take calls from people all over the country for referral. Mm-hmm. Like, and I just loved getting calls from from just getting calls from Arizona mm-hmm. and, and and Illinois. Like it was cool to talk to people. I even had a lady hit on me. <laughs> thought I was a man. That's, you she was like, you sound, at the end of the call, she was like, you sound really handsome, sir. <laughs> and She's then a the, freak. Then the lady that was on the line with her was like, that's a man, Miss whatever her name is, yeah. Miss Thomas. <laughs> and I was like, it's okay. Then I have a chicken named after me in Iowa. They named the chicken Magenta. Look at you. It's, I don't it's, know if it's alive now, but. Shout out to Magenta the yeah, Chicken. Shout out to Magenta, Magenta the Chicken. The chicken. She, I always love laying pink eggs out here, magenta <laughs> eggs. Magenta eggs. I l- always love when you pop in on the No Studio in podcast. Everybody loves it. Any thoughts to create your own show? Um, you know what it is. I I'm such a creative person, like a creative mind. I don't know about a podcast. Mm-hmm. That seems like too much pressure. Mm-hmm. But I'm I've always been someone that loves to voice my opinion on things. Like I started a show called What's on the Menu because mm-hmm. I'm a foodie. And people know that. And I travel a lot. So I just try to... I'm very open-minded when it comes to food. I try mm-hmm. different foods. Like, I like doing stuff like that. Or, like like you said, like, when I do other people's podcasts, I love being a guest on a podcast. Mm-hmm. Because you're the controller, but I'm going with the motions. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to still be able to carry it. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just a it's just a good conversation. And, not like, the way my brain is, like, I'll say, sidebar, you have eight chocolate-covered uh, oranges... And now we starting a whole new conversation. Mm-hmm. Right. But, no, I mean, yeah. you're a natural at it. Um, and it's crazy, like, the way that a few minutes ago you were like, I don't want to, like, say this. So many of my friends that are battle rappers, mm-hmm. it seems like such a restrictive thing. Because I, I put everything on blast, you know what I mean? I'm out there. But a lot of my, but I understand back in the day, you know, when I was active, you don't want people to know certain things that can be used against you. Yeah, it's like, every, well, how it go? Anything you will say. Can and will be used against you. That's mm-hmm. how battle rap is. But if you dope, it don't matter, right? It do matter. It do matter. But what I what I was trying not to say is not that serious. Right. So oh, no, you no, didn't no. say it? No, For I sure. did with the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not that serious. Now, um, now if that was my job now, right. I wouldn't say it because right. it's relevant. Right. Yeah. You know, but something four years ago, five years ago. Now go ahead, um, take a stab at it. Wait, what what's I'm sorry, before we get off the food, what's your craziest concoction? I don't really have crazy concoctions. At least I don't think they are. To me, they're normal. Like, I'm not doing something crazy like... You seen this shit like... Pickles sweetie. and nacho cheese. Yeah, I'm not wilding like okay. that. But I can say, I would try those things. Mm. The way my mindset is, if somebody likes it, what's the harm in trying it? If mm. I like the two things, why not? Somebody put cereal to milk and made it go... You feel me? They changed the game. There it is. But yeah, that's just the way I am. I'm, I'm, I'll try it. I'll try it. You feel me? Use some water, baby. It won't hurt you. Water on cereal is <laughs> crazy. Um, <laughs> j- before we get out of here, a couple mm-hmm. things. I was talking to one of my homies the other day, and we, he said, and we kind of figured it out to be true that I've probably hosted. Damn near 5,000 battles, if not more. Holy hell. Like, it's definitely it's between, like, 2,500 and 5,000. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not going out on a limb. Like, that, if there's a Guinness Book of World Records, I don't think anyone's hosted more <sighs> battles than me. Um, and then there's a, there's a conversation that came up of who's been at the most battles. It's, and they were like, it's either you... Or jazz. Well, you can't count because you already hosted 2,500. You got me beat. But <laughs> you, you got me beat. But, a, you know, a, like to be, yeah, but I don't know. 
that's like total battles though like you you're in a lot of battles too you're up there no i was like so i, I thought about this like maybe two years ago I genuinely feel like I've been to the most battle rap events about out of anybody in battle rap, but they did bring up one name that might, might because he started Poison before Penn? me. Yeah, yeah. He's the one name that might, but I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I think I still got it. it it's different because like a lot of the battles I hosted is from different eras, so it's not even like the same thing. But it's just yeah. me standing in the middle and like hosting. Right, and and when when y'all were going to events, they weren't as many. Right for me. I'm easily, not now, because they kind of died out, but in the prime, 2012 to 2017, I easily hit, easily hit 300. Right. Easily. And that's what I'm saying. Like, so so keep in mind, I'm hitting that am amount and then like hosting the whole King of the Dots season and mm -hmm. going to all the, and then, yeah. so it's, and then it's like if you're 10, a host, 15 if you're a ho and battles. Even, for yeah, people used to book me to host like events. That counts for, I've hosted maybe, a thousand, probably, or a thousand, five hundred. I'm saying events, not battles. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I meant like battles. Battles right. is crazy. I would never even try to count that. It's a lot. Events, I'll probably say I hosted like maybe 60. I was going to say 50, 60. Yeah, yeah, I'll say I host like 50, 60, like just all over the country. But besides that, yeah, I, I just used to pop out to different shit and I travel. So, well, and people yeah. talk about. The jazz face, the jazz reaction, like you ain't really doing yeah. it right if you don't get a jazz face That's when you're so battling. Dope. And um, you know, there's jazz. She got jazz face merch. Oh, they're needed. I, I have these jazz face. I I had them with the Geechee battle. You might have seen a few of them in the crowd. I had like jazz faces on a stick. I saw it. Yeah. And you just throw it up when you like a bar. I still got some. Jazz face. I need one. Poison pen reactions. Mm -hmm. And like the fact that me and you haven't hosted together is kind of. A disservice to the culture. I think we need to like that's something I want to make happen this year. Jazz oh, and Lush yeah. together hosting an event. That's that's damn near monumental. It it needs to happen. Like that's a that's a thing. That's a, that's a whole joint. Like I can there. imagine them seeing it. They're gonna it's gonna hit them like yeah. We've never seen this. Though. Right. It feels like we should have been so Jazz and Lush together. What does yeah. that card look like? That's a big card. It gonna have to be some. It gonna That's be a big card. Shit. If yeah. Lush is hosting, yeah, me, yeah. I'll, I'll host any card. You pay me. <laughs> if Lush is hosting, that's a big card. Nah, we we gonna we gonna make that happen, and uh, we need that coffee battle to happen too. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely gonna. Yeah. Happen. Other than that, what's what's Jazz doing this year? What's what, what we gotta look forward to? I'm trying to. So last year, my my whole goal for the year was to just get out of my comfort zone. That was with everything, not just battle rap, just everything in life. And I did that, and I did it successfully, and I mm -hmm. learned a lot about myself. Like I learned so much about myself. I've learned what I want. Okay, where am I headed? Oh, this was easy to do. Let me challenge myself. This year for me is more about expansion. Like, how can I get Jazz the rapper in other lights? You know what I'm saying? And honestly, being here is a great start. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have never thought I would just be here doing an interview you feel me so this is a great start but just we bringing you back get used to it we got we got some things yeah. listen i'm i'm here i can um, take you around the city yeah come it's on. a good that's a good woman to know right there come on yeah i like your vibes like your vibes okay. is just very chill like you don't seem extra <laughs> you know i hate extra nah. <laughs> why are you looking at me for <laughs> um but yeah so expanding so musically or songwriting or ghostwriting or acting, podcasts, interviews, like, I want to expand Jazz the Rapper, like, January 1st, 2024, I want to look back and say, I did what needed to be done. So much mm -hmm. more people know me outside of battle rap. That's really, really, really what I want. I think that should be everybody's goal. Like you said, I want multiple streams of income. I already have it, mm -hmm. but I want more that don't have to do with battle rap. Right. Well, we've seen battle rap Battle rap was always supposed to be like the journey, not the destination. And mm -hmm. now it's become the destination, which is great. Totally fine. But it's good to see you trying to expand beyond that. And I know you'll be very successful because you. you're very successful at everything you mm -hmm. do. So, yeah, it's um, like I said, last year it just taught me a lot about myself. Like, you know how to say you can do anything you put your mind to. Yeah. It's facts. Yeah. Like, it's absolute facts. Like, three years ago, even two years ago, I would have never guessed. 2022 would look like that for me. I would have never even guessed if I could do it. Like, if you would have asked me, Jazz, do you think you could battle Geechee, Vixen, do two two-on-twos, one day apart, then do another battle a month after Vixen? Hell no. Give me Geechee. 
top of the year and give me Vicks in the end of the year. I can't do all of that. But I did it. And I did it easily. Like, it was a challenge, but it wasn't impossible. But you conquered. Right. I con- I, con- I dominated, mm-hmm. too, with it. But it's like, you really could do anything you put your mind to. And I just, I just know that this year is going to be a totally different year than last year. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I, I feel it. I feel it, especially when making this move, you know. Let's go. You're an yeah. absolute goat, Jazz. Um, Thank you. A humble young legend, mm-hmm. young OG in the game. And uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to chop it up. And uh, For two hours. Yeah, yeah it's no. been a minute. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> no, no, we love you, though. So <laughs> it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. Any final Thanks, thoughts bro. before we sky up out of here? Shout outs to. <laughs> My baby. Come on, thought you oh. in the building. <laughs> Shout out to y'all. Thank you for having me. And yeah, like you said, this is not going to be the last y'all see me. So we are lit. Y'all know the vibes. <laughs> we about this biatch. <laughs>